Hello everybody. It's a first day stream and this is your audio <laughs> reminder <laughs> to moisturize. Uh, if, like us, you get dry hands. I don't think anyone needed that. Like, nobody was waiting for that. Especially if you didn't see what I was doing, if you only heard it, I think that was an amazing experience. Please let me know. <laughs> I just thought it was yogurt. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I need more of this, actually. It's uh, our good old trusty hand cream. Hello, Psycho, congrats on being first. Hello, Dark Lord, congrats on being second. Modern Art, you're right. It's a first day stream kind of week. Because of Tifa. It's also me. because of Tifa. <laughs> I tapped out for a sec. That's what you get. That... You're also going on a vacation. Wait. Just for you, Psycho, something that is almost as good. I just want you to know that I'm no part there of this. Go. It's just uh, moisturizing our hands. <laughs> Hello, Evie. Hello, everybody. How are you all doing? Everything he said. I feel better now. My hands were really dry. I went into the office today, had Too a sticky. long meeting, and I must have sanitized my hands like 12 times at least with like the cleaning alcohol stuff. And my skin is. My hands? The skin on my hands is about twice as old as the skin on my face now. At least it looked that way. In case you weren't aware yet, Jack is quite a germaphobe. I have become a very germ-adverse person during the pandemic, yes. Yeah. Tifa, you could easily stop this torture van stream button is right there. Oh, no. you mean this one? I won't disable the thing. I can do that. I have that power. <laughs> No, she doesn't. Well, that was could, it. But... We're on a vacation starting yeah. now. See you in two weeks. Modernard said it's an early kind of stream, so bye. See you bye. in two weeks. Two and a half. -ish. Two and a half? Two and a half because of Friday and the weekend. Nah, we still have sure. Higurashis to play and uh, mysteries to solve. Why do I think we're gonna end on an even worse cliffhanger tonight and then for like two and a half ish weeks? I I will just hate this. It could. Well, do you want to get right in the recap? No. Then you... Uh, Chill. Hey, I'm just... That's an actual offer. We can go right into the recap okay. and see how far we get. Here's today. the thing. Here's the thing. If the world was a better place and if I had it my way, we would still be streaming tomorrow. However, Tifa will need to pack. As in, Tifa will need to decide what to take along and I'll need to pack it for her because if Tifa packs, we'll need twice the amount of luggage. So... Twice the amount of luggage? Why? You're really bad at packing. Yeah, but they need twice the amount of space, not twice the amount of luggage. Yeah, and that's what I meant, like suitcase and stuff. Yeah, but twice the amount of luggage means I take extra stuff. I meant suitcase. I do suitcase. not take extra stuff. I meant, don't argue semantics right now. Part of my point. So... We're gonna get where we're gonna get. That's all I can say. So lonely, take me home. I thought you are home already. I, I figured you are in your tower, Evie. Take Evie home. To the tower. <laughs> du, du, du. To the Can't think of lyrics fast enough. Du, du, du. <laughs> Something like that. Can it sabotage the German railway so you stay at home? <laughs> to that I, mean, I say, you don't need to sabotage it. It's bad enough already. I mean, it is possible. I was once a complete douchebag with a colleague of mine to stall a bus. I know it's not the same as a train. But you know where I'm going. But it kind of works the same. Everybody, please listen to this and you will never have questions about Tifa again. <laughs> hey, I realize it's a dick dickish thing to do, okay? But it was an emergency. I went home with a colleague and another colleague who was a bit late sent us a message that he really needed the bus that was still coming. He was like, just left the building, the bus was supposed to be there in like a minute. If you run from the building to the bus stop, it's like five minutes. So we saw the message and we already saw the bus coming. We were like ahead of him already at the bus stop. So we like ran to a zebra stripe in front of the bus and basically <laughs> To stall, we could see him down the street running towards us. <laughs> to stall, we just walked 
back and forth over the zebra path, blocking the way to the bus, so he was forced to wait for us. But was they like... took an entire bus and the whole street behind it hostage. <laughs> you really needed that bus. You delayed everybody. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm saying I know it was a dickish thing to move. We just like walked back and forth. The bus guy at some point was like hanging out of the window. About to us. come out and fist fight you. <laughs> yeah, GTA <everything>. style. <laughs> Under the moon. But you know, he needed that bus. So we're like walking back and forth and... The colleague I was is a bit intimidating. He's like a bit bigger and looks like he's gonna fuck you up if you mess with him. So I think that was in our advantage that the bus driver didn't come out immediately because it was if it was just me, he was probably there the second I turned around. You just hit the gas. <laughs> yeah, he was like, fuck this bitch. <laughs> it is but a bump in the road. I got a schedule to go to. Mm -hmm. So we just kept crossing the zebra paths until our friend zebra, stripe. zebra stripes. Your path. Until our friend until our friend finally got there like all out of breath. He's like, thank you. And then we just Moved on, the bus went through, he got into the bus, and all was fine in the world. So, Technically, we needed that bus too to get home. Yeah, but, but you're not going to get into that bus. He's going <laughs> to spit in your face, and rightfully so. <laughs> we decided it was better yeah. to wait until the next one. Because <laughs> we weren't in a hurry anyway. So here's my question for you. Do you approve or not approve of what she did? Because... I don't know, I feel like I shouldn't, but at the same time, Psycho, I'm with you. Get some friends who block the road for you. Like, that's like a big thing. Like, you did a whole thing. All in all, it just took a few minutes. It's not like we taped ourselves to the road like some protesters and block it for the entire day. But on the other hand, like, I know this is like super sweet for the person who you were stalling for, but on the other hand, there was a whole bus of people trying to get somewhere. Yeah, I know. You know, like as the person running for the bus, I would absolutely love you and you're the bestest person ever. As the person sitting in the bus, I'm about to break a window, jump out and punch you. Yeah, same. I would get mad at me too. I would absolutely get mad at me too. Yeah, but they're like fun times, you know? Why are you so morally ambiguous sometimes? Okay, but I got a counter story to talk about. I'll leave a banner on, okay? To talk about morally ambitionish. M morally ambitionish? Ambitionish. Welcome to Hini Mini Me. <laughs> okay, carry on. I think I've mentioned before that at the stop where I get out of work at the train station. It can be a bit shady, like every now and then there's lots of pickpockets around trying to get what's in my pockets. Hence pickpockets, not pick tifas. <laughs> but I've, I mean, if they were trying to get you versus your belongings, they'd be kidnappers, yeah, not But I feel like I'm always the target and I think it's because I look like I can't run after them. <laughs> you look like... <laughs> Which they have completely correct. Tifa, you have resting victim face. <laughs> you look like you're out of shape enough to be able to get away from, like to easily be able to get away from if I were to steal your bag. Yeah, like that's the thing. But Jack already had like lunch slash dinner at work. So I was like, okay, yeah. fuck it. You know what? I'm just going to get a dinner. There's a place near the station. A kebab for all non-Germans. That I wanted to check out. So I was just going to do that. While I went up the stairs, I saw a, I want to say family, waiting for the stairs with a buggy and... Waiting for the stairs. Wait, yeah, they were standing in front of the stairs waiting for someone to help them okay, lift waiting the at the stairs. You don't yeah, wait for stairs. stairs. They were Stay, in front stairs of the stairs, are immobile. Yeah, semantics. <laughs> someone yeah. came and helped them up. I didn't really think much of it. I went to get my donor. Got it, went down. And when I came down, I kid you not, they were standing at the bottom of the stairs again, waiting for someone to bring them back up. And I'm like, this was a new scam where they wait for somebody to help them carry up a thing. And while you're busy holding like the trolley thing or whatever, somebody picks your pockets. Yes. And I was like, oh, damn, I didn't. 
didn't this bitch just get That's up? That's an And now move. she's like down again. And the funny thing is like there's an elevator around the corner. Like they could take the elevator. So I like go down and I'm like... That's what? next level shady. What is this? So I'm like just eating my donut honestly. I didn't feel like... <laughs> I feel like helping when there's an elevator right next to them. But someone, I, while I was watching from a distance, because I had nothing to do for the train to come, someone came and offered to help them. So they did. And he had the front bit and mm -hmm. was walking up the stairs backwards, looking down. Yeah, you like if you help somebody carry their baby stroller, usually you're really you focused on how you hold the thing. You don't want to like jiggle too much because usually there's a toddler in there. You you don't want to hold it weird because usually like the mother or somebody like who is below you on the stairs also needs to balance the thing. Yeah. Yeah. You are fully focused on the task. And I kid you not, he was it's also a long stair, so there's time. This guy is helping them walk up the stairs and the little shit of a kid that had this little bicycle next to him went behind the dude and was trying to get something out of his back pocket. I'm like, are you for real? That kid was like eight or nine years old and he was trying to lift his pockets. I mean, yeah, if your parents tell you to Yeah, do I know you grow up like this, but just the fact that you have like this older lady with a baby in a stroller and this kid, actually eight, probably seven, like it had this little bike with him. Too. Probably a 32 year old person <laughs> who just really looks like a kid. <laughs> I was gonna go say something like I was already heading towards them, but someone else saw, stopped it. Somehow they still put the stroller back off and they just ran off. Yeah, I mean, what are you gonna do? Push the person and the baby in the stroller like down the stairs in anger? <laughs> like you can't drop the baby, can you? Like yeah. You're, you're kind of oh, that is so, oh my god. That. I was like, are you kidding me? So now they're not aiming for my pockets, at least anymore. But it's like, they're going for the people helping you up the stairs. I already found it so weird that she was down the stairs again. So I guess someone... I hope they call the police. Yes. Yes. Usually not. And CPS. Yes. Because those kids need to be taken away from those families. Hopefully put into better places. Because goddamn. Yeah, but the problem is nothing really gets done about them. There's so much organized crime in the bigger cities in Germany that involve kids. And it's not, disgusting. They just keep them. Like most of the time when you see them like begging on the streets with a baby, it's always yeah. quiet. Have you ever seen one of those babies crying? No, not really. Because they're drugged. Can, like we, can we talk about things that are slightly less aggravating and negative? Yeah, but like that is known. There's whole documentaries about them. These people usually get dropped on the street by a van early in the morning. Yeah, it's not like they chose to do this. They are also being nah, forced it's, it's into or, this. It's organized yeah. crime. They're basically forced into this. Yeah. But it is a known thing and nothing happens. Like you can call the cops and they'll just... I don't even think they can do anything about it. But it was like, so I've never seen this tactic before. I've seen and heard of lots of weird ways. Whatever villainy you can imagine, somebody else has already thought of and is currently doing it. Yeah, That's I just guess. how the human mind works. I guess. <laughs> but I'm why discuss sure. that when we can talk about Keiji being sideswapped by a van? <laughs> I yeah. see someone's getting impatient. Fair enough, I guess. It's not... Yeah, I should have chosen my words more carefully. <laughs> also, Evie, I see you're making progress Final on Xenoblade. Final last chapter of Xenoblade 2. Hoping to have it beaten by the time you get back. Should be doable. No promises on Tornado. There is no rush. Hmm? Enjoy Just yourself. Just enjoy, enjoy your time with the games. I think they're amazing. They are so one of my favorites. Take it all in. Yeah. So, Tifa, what happened for last... <laughs> How do I segue out of this? What else happened today that we can talk about that lifts the mood after that? I mean, nothing really happened, but every time I think the pickpockets in the area are gone, they come no. back. I feel like someone at some point people might call the cops, then there's cops around for a bit, then they stay away for a while, probably go to the next station or something, yeah. and then they like rotate back. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the people that do this in an organized manner, like A, the people you see on the street will get replaced by somebody else, B, 
it's too lucrative to not do it. Yeah. Like otherwise they wouldn't do it. It's like, why do scams exist? Why do you get uh, at least three emails a day in your spam folder from Nigerian princes that uh, want your help getting inheritance money to you? Because it works. Yeah, somebody does it. Too many people do it. You know who hasn't received an email from a Nigerian prince yet? Keiichi Maibara. Other things have happened to him though, so we should talk about that. But a call, I bet. Tifa, what happened the last time we played Higurashi when they cried Chapter 1 Onikakushi Episode 11? So, the last time Keiichi wanted to go to school early to try to get a weapon slash a bat to protect himself from anything that the might happen. The baseball thing, not the thing that spread COVID. Exactly. So that is exactly what he did. He left early and on the way to school, suddenly there was a van which Hit him. straight at us. Fortunately, we saw like last moment, it hit us in the shoulder. We went face first into the yeah, when rice field. Were they rice fields? Into rice a rice fields? paddy. I, I mean, they said paddy. So I, I, I guess it's a rice paddy. Into I've a rice heard paddy. The term used for anything other than rice before. Hmm. We're covered in mud and the van just drives off. No clue who yes. it was. We didn't see who was in it. But someone tried to kill us, basically. Yes. And we barely managed to avoid that. Yes. So we went to school after that, because what else can we do, right? We weren't seriously hurt or injured. And we already knew people were probably trying to kill us, so it's not like this was exactly news to KG. Exactly. It just adds to our paranoia. Yeah. We got to school early, and fortunately we were the first there, so we did what we came for. We looked around for a bed. Talking about stealing, we went for everybody's locker. <laughs> And we found one that didn't have a name Yes. with the bat in it and a tracking suit. We a tracking suit? A track suit. A baseball uniform. It was a track suit, I think. A baseball uniform. Baseball uniform. Little League, also probably, Cage, he said. We left the suit, but we did grab the bat and our own track suit to get changed again because, you know, we're covered yeah, in mud. mud. Mm -hmm. After we found the bats, Satoko and Rika already came in and they were like, oh, why do you suddenly want a bat? And Rika already dropped a, you better not lose it, cryptic message yeah. on us. She kind of hinted at something, but didn't say what exactly. No, that's true. And we were like, mm, whatever, it's not ours, so we probably shouldn't lose it. We'll bring it back because clearly it belonged to somebody since it was in one of our lockers in the classroom. So, somebody. Suddenly we are baseball fans, so yes. to not seem suspicious, we decided to go outside and start practicing our swings, which... Because suddenly, and for our physical well-being, we decide, KG decided, to become I'm kid. playing baseball now and I really want to get into the championship and I want to practice my swing for that. That's the story he told people when he was asked, because that happened multiple times. Mion and Reyna looked like they bought into it for now and left us alone. They played along. They played along. We had our class as usual, and once it was time for club activities, we once again were like, yeah, no, sorry, nope, I'm out. can't, Peace. bye, see you later. Went out with our bats, and on bats. our way, bats. On our way back home, we had the feeling of being followed once again. But skillfully, not just somebody shoddily walking behind you, trying to, you know, walk the same way as you, or like a completely innocent, naive person who doesn't know what's happening, just walking the same path as you. No, somebody specifically matching our step, masking their presence, and when we looked around, hiding, holding their breath. <laughs> It was indeed Master Stalker Reyna. Who pulled the I'm a lost deer baby, like all curled up, <laughs> trying to be cute, like, I know KG is scaring me. Oh. Who we then, of course, confronted because Reyna thought we were acting yeah. weird. And suddenly it was like, oh, you're acting like. What was to, wait, to be fair, to be fair, KG was fully in paranoia mode, which I true. understand. Like, we were mad as No hell. disrespect. If you feel like you're being followed, especially after the things that have already happened, that's gonna fuck with your head. So he, clutching the bat, was like, where are you? I can see you! And then he eventually finds her and he's being threatening. He yells at her. 
We're still being very mad about everything in that Reina. Very Which makes sense because Keiichi, despite having qualms about like, oh, she looks so innocent and it's breaking my heart to do this to her. It feels like I'm hurting her. He still thought about, no, she didn't just walk here. She followed me. She, she matched my steps. She was hiding. This is not normal. I am right to be angry. This is messed up. So we tried to find out why it was she was following us and she was like, oh, it's because you're well, threatening acting. Her with a baseball bat. We're still threatening her. It's because you're acting like Satoshi before yes. he transferred. So of course we went no, no, back no, no, and no. forth. It was all like, oh, uh, you're doing this uh, and that, and just like him. It's like, what are we talking about? Just like Satoshi, he also picked up a bat. He also pretended to be into baseball. He also practices swings. He, you did all the things he did before he and then he cut she cuts out again and he loses it on her he said speak woman what are you talking about and she goes before he transferred keiichi kun <sighs> she got under his skin again so of course keiichi gets even more paranoid because what does it mean we don't know what is meant with transferred what happened to him he's just gone oishi san said he disappeared she's saying he transferred. What do you mean he transferred? And she just goes, I already told you, Keiichi, he transferred. So now we believe if we are indeed doing everything that Satoshi also did, if Rain is telling the truth, we must be under the curse of Oishi oh, yeah, Shira or uh, Shira Sama. Why do because I keep forgetting his name? Clearly, because you're being confused with Obama sometimes. <laughs> Because clearly, if we do all the same things as Satoshi, that means the outcome will be the same, which means we will get Oni Kakushi demoned away, right? That just makes sense. One and one is two. So why wouldn't it be not the same this time? We didn't get any Skate more information, but by when we were home, we felt... We didn't get more information because despite threatening her with a bat and our demeanor and everything, after she did the whole blank stare thing, KG was done for. He again collapsed. Like his whole like, I'm in the right, I need answers, I'm menacing, I'm trying to like push you to do the right thing and tell me things. It just evaporated the moment she did the, what are you doing KG? Which I get, it would probably do the same to me. I'm just saying, we in the end didn't get as much info as we would have liked. Oh. So we got home. Reyna's reason was, oh I'm gosh. trying to get home and I need to go the same way. Well, yeah, that's why they've been walking home the entire time. But it's the fact that she was following him, she was hiding, and being vague everything and shit. we just said in the past five minutes. We finally arrived home and we had the feeling that someone got into the house with us, like Standing right behind us. Right behind us. We could hear their hair move. So we were getting extremely paranoid, of course, and started swinging our bed around, breaking apart the house basically in the process. Yeah, we kind of trashed the entrance area. At least the cupboard is done for. That's the one thing that's mentioned specifically, I believe. Uh, to the point where the bat was stuck in the broken cupboard. That thing is broken. Like, that broke. Yeah, good luck. I did the breaking that to your with sound. Yes, you did. But when Beautiful. we turned around, no one was there. But we are 100% sure we felt something there and was something was indeed presence. there. I'm not saying it is, but aliens. aliens. I'm not saying it's aliens, but aliens. <laughs> yeah. So we couldn't explain that, but of course we locked the door. We went upstairs. Had we a had another breakdown because that's what I would be doing too. Yeah, understandable. When the phone started ringing. First, Keiichi still had or a trilemma. That's a new word I learned. I'm going to try using it myself more often. Um, either my friends want to kill me and they're not actually my friends, or Oyashiro-sama's curse is real, or I'm going insane. I or don't like of any of these options. And understandably so. None, none of these are good. None of these are good. And then the phone started ringing. Yeah, and then Tifa said it's time to say goodnight. Yeah. I've been living with that burden for, since yesterday. Almost 24 hours of like... 
Who's on the phone? Who was phone? Who is phone? Who still is phone? Ring, ring, ring. Phone call. Phone call. With the most messed up way. But it's gonna be the prince. But <laughs> the Nigerian prince <laughs> trying to not scam you. Uh, but yesterday, as I was going to bed, I had a great idea, something I want to add to my list of predictions. I'm not convinced that's gonna be a plot point, but the game. Aliens. <laughs> Aliens. No. Um, How do I put a knot on this thing? Science, actually. Hear me out. I need to take a sip of tea first. Science. Tea just tastes better if you drink it in a very soundy way. Okay. Oh, but when I do it, huh? Yeah, when you do it, it's annoying. When I do it, it's cute. <laughs> with me, it's quirky. With you, it's disgusting. That's just how it works. Wow. Science, bitch. I'm going to science you. Watch out. So, here's my thinking. I was getting ready for bed yesterday. And what do we actually know? Outside of what could be Keiichi's imagination running wild. Maybe he was actually sick, having a fever, thinking things that weren't there. Kind of hallucinating. Um, we do know that every night of a Watanagashi, somebody dies and somebody gets lost or vanishes, gets demoned away. And I always find it strange when games suddenly bring up, oh, what drugs could induce things that make you rip out your own throat or act weird and kill people and stuff. What uh, mental and physical conditions could do this? Specifically, they talked about depression, bipolar disease or bipolar disorder. What's your point? The Watanagashi to me is weird in the sense that for the festival, the townspeople all come together mm -hmm. and they bring their old futons mm -hmm. that they burn. Not all of them though. People bring old, somebody brings at least one old futon that they burn then. Mm -hmm. And only in the night of the Watanagashi do these things happen. And only in the night of the Watanagashi do they burn old furniture, basically. Mm -hmm. And I forgot who it was, but when the Watanagashi part happened, we were talking about this is kind of like polluting the place. <laughs> because you set things on fire and then you dump them in the river. So to cut a long story short... Shut the fuck up, I'm sorry. You believe this. <laughs> what if... <laughs> Let me have my moment. I've been waiting for this since yesterday. Don't take it away from Go me. What if there is something specifically happening at the Watanagashi that triggers somebody to do these things? And not just the, oh my god, it's the night of the Watanagashi. I must murder someone because Oyashiro Sama's curse is real. What if it's something way dumber and scientific like the. I don't know, what were futons made of in 1983 in Japan or let's say the late 70s? Because I would imagine they don't just buy one, use it and then burn it. They're probably old futons. What? Uh, cotton? I mean, the cotton is what they said they burned, but what if there's like other chemicals in there? Because burning chemicals and inhaling that standing around a bonfire made of old furniture is probably not good for your body. Okay, so your point is they inhale the fumes yes. of the cotton and that's what's causing all Somebody that. gets Thank high you. on old futon fumes and goes full berserk and goes, oh, I am on your shoes, Homer. Dad, <laughs> you, come away. It's all the asbestos in the old futons. That must be it. It has to be. You know, you you sleep best on that. Like knocks you out. No. 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 So if you can buy anything with asbestos still you in it, you probably can somewhere. Yeah. You can scratch it out some walls, but <sighs> please don't, don't. don't do that. That's, don't do that. that's how you get really sick and then die a horrible death. Please don't do that. Um, asbestos is highly carcinogenic, no? It's like lung cancer and stuff. It's for, it's for fibers that are super tiny that you inhale. That's the biggest problem with asbestos, I think it was. Um, there is a chemical being released during the 
Futon burning. Burning of stuff at work. What a gushy that causes somebody to go nuts. There we go. Не бидеть. People can't see that I made typos. Why do you? Не бидеть. I can't yeah. type when people are looking. I hate it when people around me go не бидеть. <laughs> I'm gonna hit you in the не бидеть. <laughs> I, actually, <laughs> first I'm gonna hit you in the hini mini me, and then I'm gonna hit you in the nini mini bits. It's like I'm just standing around eating my dinner, and suddenly people go nibbitch. <sighs> Happens all the time. I love you, do you know? Do not the wall cotton candy. Yes, do not. Tifa, you ready for Higurashi? I am ready. Go for it. Uh, look. Go for it. Who this? New house, who this? I still find the phone systems here very weird because why does the one upstairs not ring? Tifa, there is no phone upstairs. Phone? Do not look at every detail in but the I background. See, I see art. the phone. It's even one of those. Like the round one. I who? forgot what the English name is for them. Who wants to explain it to her again? It's just to give you an image, a, a feeling. It's yeah, they should not put the phone there. Can I put you somewhere? It doesn't even have a cable. The phone rang noisily downstairs. Generally, there were no calls for me, so I never really answered the phone much. But since my parents were around here, I had no choice. Oh, just let it ring. <laughs> Rotary phones, thank you, that's the name. That's a that's a word I haven't heard in a long time. I yeah. love those, like the sound it makes when it clicks back. They're so much fun. Click. Yeah. Click. Something like My that. grandfather still has one. Yeah. I love them. Red truth, the upstairs phone is a delusion. These backgrounds don't have critical plot points in it. Yeah, it's not thank a you. plot point, but I feel like this is I'm misleading gonna plot your points. and broken and doesn't make sense. Unplayable, zero out of ten. You mean the square clock isn't gonna come up later? The square clock actually does, because the clock is a part of the story now, since we're hiding our little but not the fact that please it's don't square. kill me diary but behind it. But not the it. fact that it's square. Just the fact that it's a clock that he made himself in school. Yeah, that also doesn't look like a clock we made ourselves, by the way, but that's something, okay, that's something else. I squirmed off a bed and went downstairs. <clears throat> Phone voice. Hello, this is my bar residence. Katie, this is mom. I intuitively had a bad feeling about this. Is the Nigerian prince also called mom? I'm gonna send you to Nigeria to become a princess. <laughs> it was because I thought she was going to ask me to go out and buy things. So I took the initiative. What? I don't mind having instant noodles for dinner. There's still a lot of them. Mm. The other day we went as a family and bought a whole case of cup noodles. I wanted to get a bunch of different kinds, actually, but they refused since the individual packs were expensive. So instead I got a whole case of a mega-sized pork, bone and ginger flavored one select. We started doing yeah, the same was. things, actually. Like if you buy them in a box of 10, they're cheaper. <laughs> You yeah. get one for free, basically. The advantage is that the one we like the best is just the one flavor. That is true. So it's not like we're missing out. I'm gonna plot your point sounds weirdly <laughs> sexual and I can't explain why. I think it's because plotting, like plowing, um, induces the image of like physical movement that is like like how your joints crack with every... <laughs> yeah, that's how little movement I get, yeah. I buy them in a box of 30 or so. We don't even have boxes that big. Ours comes in a box of 10. Yeah. If it would let us buy a, in bigger bulk, we would do that I too. would absolutely do that. But So much easier. But my parents don't like strong flavors and didn't touch any of them. So the cupboards were still full of them. So you see, there really isn't a need to go shopping, right? Keiichi, I'm not asking you to go shopping. Both mommy and daddy have to go to Tokyo right now because of work. 
Do you remember、mm-hmm. how he specifically said home is probably a safe space as long as his parents are here? <laughs> yeah, about that. Huh? Right now. This was really abrupt. No, we're already here. We left this afternoon. It's quite a distance from Tokyo to Hinamizawa. Gunning at full speed down the highway would still take six hours. Dad has a license, but since he doesn't like the highway, they likely took the train. It would have taken longer. I'm thinking you might understand since you heard us speaking last night, but it has to do with Daddy's contract. Right now, things aren't going so smoothly. Now that you mention it, I did remember that we talked all that time about how his job prospects weren't looking so good. Daddy is really sensitive about things like this, so if we leave things as they are, it will affect his work. Understandable, as a person whose livelihood depends on your individual contracts to make artwork for people. Yeah, it's kind of your entire livelihood, isn't it? Understandable. Part of my father's particularly fragile artistic personality. His emotions changed as easily as for false guy. Keiichi does not yet understand what it means to be an adult and pay for bills. Like, <laughs> throw up at her hands on that. <laughs> Do I need to bring my friends home? Hey, Dad, have you heard of furries? <laughs> They pay well with commissions. I heard on the internet that doesn't really exist yet like that. You could also say, <clears throat> you could also just say he couldn't take criticism. Something like that can be done over the phone. Keiichi, this is your father's job, so you can support him a bit, please. Anyway, it's just faster to talk about it in person. Faster, six-hour way there. It's faster to talk about it in person because if we did this over phone, it would have taken nine hours. Nine. Yeah. So there wouldn't be any misunderstandings. <laughs> What do you mean? I have to grow up and work? Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, oh, the pain. Maybe your contract's failing because no one likes your shitty square clocks. No, Keiichi made that. Keiichi made the, the shitty square clock. <laughs> Keiichi made that, not the dad. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Do, do you know the? It's not your fault. It's mommy and daddy. No, it's not mommy and daddy, Keiichi. Your dad is losing jobs because of your shitty square clock. Your mommy is gonna have to become a prostitute, and your dad is gonna have to go into slavery because of your <laughs> shitty square clock. You ruined everything, Keiichi. Do you see all of this? It's going to be gone by tomorrow because of your shitty square clock. Can't get my glasses. Because now I know why I don't have children. As for his son, there was nothing more I could say once we started talking about work. So we'll be back tomorrow night. Keiichi, will you be fine on your own?、Mm-mm. If I say no, are you gonna come home? It's not like I'll die or anything. <laughs> See what I did there, mom? No, she doesn't. <laughs> Keiichi, you shouldn't speak so lightly of dying. If there's something troubling you, just talk to us. But not now, because we're in Tokyo. How about we talk in person, Mom, so there can be no misunderstanding?、Uh, yeah. I believe Mommy will be able to help out. Yesterday, I did bring up if I died rather abruptly, so I suppose, so I suppose they were a little worried. Not worried enough. But really, I was more depressed by the fact that nothing would be solved by telling them. But I didn't plan on dying. At least not while I still knew nothing. I would never allow it. I won't die. I won't. I'll survive even if I have to gnaw my leg off. Yeah. See you then. Tomorrow morning, make sure to wake up and eat your breakfast, and don't forget to take a bath and brush your teeth. I won't die. I'll survive even if I have to gnaw my leg off. Yeah. See you. <laughs> <laughs> Ah,、uh, this conversation. Ah,、uh, not my problem. You brought me into this world. That, you that is very、it. teenage. Yeah, no one understands me. Very fifteen-year-old angsty. I get that. I get that. 
The only thing you'll have left by tomorrow is a shitty little square clock to protect you from the elements while we live on the streets because not even the debt collectors will want your shitty clock. <laughs> Just grab the clock and go like... Oh my god. Oh, I would... That feels so bad. Oh, you're getting wet too. <laughs> but no, you're getting wet. No, you... Wait, if we put our heads together, we can both be kind of under it. <laughs> That's horrible. That's that actually makes me feel bad. <laughs> Slightly sad. <sighs> yeah, yeah. See you. The call ended like that. Sometimes my parents went off to Tokyo for business meetings, but Tokyo was far away. I normally did things by phone. The times they did go were normally planned out in advance. It, it never happened this suddenly. I couldn't say that those circumstances didn't feel strange or ever unnatural. Anyway, I only needed to recognize the reality of the situation. But tonight, I was the only one in the house. That when my parents came back from work, I'd be gone. Missing. Vanished. Looking back on the series of events of the previous five years involving Oyashiro-sama's curse, it wouldn't seem that strange at all. Come to think of it, it was getting pretty late. I didn't think it was good that the only light on in the whole house was from my room on the second floor. It was the same as broadcasting to the enemy that my parents were gone and this was their chance. First, I ran to the living room, flicked on the lights and turned the TV on to a reassuring volume. Next was the study. I similarly turned on the lights and some music. With this, from the outside, it would look like my parents were here. Once again, I went through the house, checking to see if there was anything left unlocked. When I saw the veranda and the laundry slanging out there, I went pale. That would have made it too obvious. I needed to take it down. Is he finally doing chores out of fear of being kidnapped? <laughs> Next time killed? you just go, if you don't do your chores, we'll go to Tokyo again. If you don't clean up your room, I'm going to invoke Oyashiro-sama's curse. Do you want to be defeated away, Keiji? <laughs> I snatched on the laundry haphazardly and erased all traces that my mother wasn't there. It should be fine now. Ah, the garage. They hadn't gone all the way to Tokyo by car, but they had gone up to Okonomiya Station. The garage was empty, wide open and in plain sight. This was not good. I panicked and rushed out the back to close the normally open garage door. It should be fine now. I needed to get the paper. Wait, wait, wait. They left, leaving the garage wide open. I mean, it's, it's a village, actually, never mind. Yeah. I mean, what's the worst that's gonna happen? A raccoon? A, a tanuki walking into your garage? Do tanukis live in the era of Hinamizawa? I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking too much of city life yeah i wouldn't want to do that in places where you have to be worried about people actually like using that to break in mom always got the paper since they left in the afternoon the evening paper was still out there my premonition was correct i pulled out everything from the mailbox and dropped it in the entryway with this for sure this time it should be fine Come to think of it, leaving the cupboard busted like that for my little freakout was kind of bad. I'll just say I tripped and found the bat was holding smashed into it. Even so, just leaving it in a current state wasn't good. I should clean it up a little before mom got back and scolded me. I remembered there was a broom and dustpan in the closet. As I was going to get them, the phone rang once again. This is not mom and this is not going to be dad. And it's not going to be Oishi-san either. This is gonna be probably Mion or Reina because Hinamizawa is a small town and not, like the car being parked at the station, like that's a visible thing, you know? I think it's gonna be a breather. A breather? Oh god. Oh yeah, yeah. Is it weird that for... I didn't think I would ever say this in my life. If it's one of those calls, 
I hope it's just a pervert. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope not 4K cheap. And <laughs> For once in my life, I hope it's a call like that, if it's going to be one like that. Mm. Hello, this is from my bar residence. Oh, is this Keiichi Gun? Is your mother around? Uh, uh, she isn't here at the moment. You idiot, Keiichi Maibara. Don't reveal that your parents are gone. You can follow up still. Calm down and take care of it. Just don't pick up the phone. Uh, I think she'll be back soon. That wasn't a good response either. Now they might say they'll call again or to tell her to call them when she comes back. Then that's fine. It wasn't anything important. Well then, sorry for the bother. The scenario I feared didn't play out, eliciting a sigh of relief. That call was fortunate in more ways than one. I'd have to deal with any telephone calls coming in from my parents tonight. No, you don't. Yeah, just don't Just pick say up. you were on the toilet, in the shower, couldn't pick up, you were too late. Oh, I just didn't care. Or that. What am I gonna do? Keep calling? Like, I was somehow able to deal with a phone call just now, but I couldn't continue to rely on such poor improvisation. I needed to make up a good story to explain that my parents were home, but couldn't answer the phone at the moment. They were making tempura and couldn't step away right now. That wasn't good enough. They were sick and went to bed because they weren't feeling well. Is that going to be safe enough? I was thinking about it on the way back to my room when the phone rang once again. Oh my god, what's with this traffic? Do not pick up. Objection! If you say you were busy, when you're talking to them, contrary to your goal. Yeah, plus that. Well, the parents are busy doing something. Yeah, we're just the bad son not helping them or something. Yeah, I'm actually allergic to making tempura. So I can only eat it. It's a thing. You wouldn't understand. It's, it's a very medical thing. It takes a long time to explain. It was like they were calling because they knew I was going to lie. I didn't want to pick up. But I knew I had to. They suspect my parents around here. I should have just taken the phone off the hook under the pretense that I didn't realize what it was. But since the phone rang, I had to pick it up. I prepared myself and lifted up the receiver. He could have done that. And then just plug it back in tonight or like tomorrow morning. Before he went to school. Hello? I stopped announcing this was for my bar residence. I had no reason to be kind to someone I didn't know the identity of. But unlike my uncouth voice, the person on the other side sounded goofy and lighthearted. <laughs> Hello, my apologies for calling so late. This is Oishi from the Okonomiya bookstore. Uh, Oishi-san? Is that you, my bar son Good evening. Good to hear you're doing well. well. Wait, just a moment, please. I grabbed the portable handset and rushed up to my room with it. It was the same no matter where I was there. It was the same no matter where I was since there was no one else home. But I wanted to be in a spot that just felt a bit safer when speaking on the phone with Oishi-san. Like in our room where we don't even notice if somebody is eavesdropping again. Keiichi! But we leave the door open. S sorry for the wait. How are things? Anything changed since then? Since when? When was that exactly? There was something about the brazen way he talked that rubbed me the wrong way. The last time I spoke with Oishi-san was... Two days ago. The day I stayed home from school, I met Oishi-san on the way back from the hospital, and we headed into town for lunch and had a talk. And then after that, Reina and Mion came to check up on me. Whenever I spoke of Oishi-san, they always knew about it. It was like that since the first time I met him. Today's phone call may well be found out by them as well. Hello? Can you hear me, my Baba son Huh? Uh, sorry. Um, what did you say? I asked if anything's changed since last time. There wasn't an answer, so I got a bit worried. Uh, um, not really. The words stopped in my throat. There was a ton of stuff that had happened. All of it baffling. What should I talk about? I didn't understand any of it, but I should try asking. If I didn't ask now, I may never have another chance. 
This night when my parents were at home, I had no guarantees I, wake, I would make it through the night safely after all. Well, Oishi-san, it seems that someone is after me. Really? It could all just be a coincidence, but the day I missed school when I was sick, the two of them came back to check up on me. Which two? Reina and Mion. They started asking about how I had lunch with you. What next? They left me some mochi when they came to visit, but there was a needle inside. Fortunately, I somehow didn't swallow it. I wonder, could that have just been a threat? About the needle. Um, it was just one of those common sewing needles you see all the time. There, there was a hole to thread string through. Not that, my Barasan, the needle itself. That's evidence. It could be used as proof that they threatened you. Where is that needle? Gone. For somebody who has watched quite a bit of TV, as KG said, why didn't he think of it earlier? Because he was freaking out about the whole thing. Yeah, it makes sense. You want to get rid of that as soon yeah. as possible, preferably. I, I get that. True. You need to be like a certain type of mentality to come back to your senses and go, oh, the thing that might have just accidentally killed me, I need to actually like secure that and yeah. save don't, it. Don't for forget, later. this kid is like 15. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's fair. That's right. That's it. I dropped the receiver and rushed downstairs. When I tossed the mochi, I overlooked it out of terror, but that needle was a valuable piece of evidence. Let's see. I threw the mochi and needle at the wall together. If it was there, then it would be on the living room wall. Why would that still be there after two days? Okay, I was gonna say... Specifically after his mom asked him why he made such a mess. Yes. If it still was on the wall, something weird was up there. But my prudent mother had cleaned the living room wall and there was not a trace of mochi left on it. Could it be that it dropped in the gap between the wall and the carpet? I frantically searched by running my palm along the carpet, but nothing turned up. I tried moving around the sofa and desks, pulling up the carpet and flapping it around. But I couldn't find the needle. Probably in a trash. Or imagine he goes over the carpet with his hand and the needle is in there and it goes under his nail. I'm gonna go, the parents are in on it. What? The parents are in on what? Wanting to threaten or kill Keiichi. Yeah. Like they got rid of the evidence. Is Suddenly, it because of his shitty square clock? Conveniently, yeah, they don't want to look at it for another second. Conveniently, they are in Tokyo. They are out for their own kid. I'm they already called me and yeah, he's okay now, just take it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jack. I totally needed that image. Wait, are you saying you needed that image or you needled that image? <laughs> sorry, I had That to. was quite bad. But I would assume it's in the trash. I'm sorry, my needle line is not worse than you going, the parents are in on it. I'm just saying it's a big coincidence, isn't it? Two out of ten. It could have been worse. I'll take it. Anything <laughs> other than a zero out of ten is good. <laughs> Assessing war crimes? Guilty. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a first day, but I have a Friday kind of mind. Well, technically this is our Friday stream. I guess. Did my mom clean up everything without noticing it? It was just two days ago. Keiichi, usually when, when people find food being thrown at a wall and laying on the ground, they don't leave it there for two days. Some people might, but usually these people also have like other living things in the apartment at some point. Like Seems cockroaches get rid of it. or rats or bigger things sometimes. didn't know what day they collected the burnable trash, but it may still be in the trash bin in the kitchen. I rushed into the kitchen, opened up the lid of a pail and poured out the contents. But even at a glance, I could tell that it would be incredibly difficult to find the needle in this pile of trash. I was looking for a needle in a trash stack. That's pretty good. I was going to say needle in a haystack moment, but the game beat me to it. 
I only have clean trash in my home. <laughs> Good on you. You need to uh, teach us how it works. Oh, God. Somehow, I have to think of your dad. That when he returns, like, empty bottles, he cleans them first. Because he doesn't yes. want to return them dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know in why. Germany, we have a system, uh, it's just colloquial, called Fund. Basically, uh, when you get like water bottles or soft drinks and stuff, they come in these reusable plastic PET bottles. And when you go pay for it, you pay for the item and you pay a couple cents extra as, uh, what do you call it in English? I have no clue, funds. Um... Um, like a deposit. So, it's usually like 25 cents. Yeah, so that when you return the bottle, you throw it into a machine, you get a printout thingy that says that the store owes you the 25 cents you paid for the bottle. That's how it works. My dad takes his empty bottles and glasses and whatever he needs to return to get his money back, but washes them out first. You don't <laughs> need to do that. You're not expected to do that. I've never met anybody else that does that. My dad does it because, in his words, he would feel ashamed if you returned them dirty. <laughs> like he would be judged. Yeah. I've never once seen one of those machines reject a bottle you put in because it was dirty. It just checks like the, the barcode on the item and like checks the weight to make sure that it's the kind of bottle the system assumes. And that it's and empty. Otherwise, automated. you go into the store, yeah. grab all the full bottles and throw yeah. them in the machine. It, it checks for like size and weight yeah. and the barcode. That's it. There's no cleanliness check. Also, I have a feeling he's going to find the needle. It's going to stick him and he will need a tetanus shot tomorrow from the hospital. Nah. I know. I'll try running my hand through it. The needle has mysteriously disappeared. It was a bit gross, but I was looking for a needle. If I felt a small prick, I'll be able to find it. It was a pretty tactless method, but it was the quickest. I held my breath and started striking the pile of trash with my hand. Striking! I think it was like... Like okay. when you go over it, like pets, but that also would have worked. I'm petting the trash. <laughs> That's what you do sometimes with me. Like glide over the, <laughs> glide over the trash. Yeah, he's using his hands. Filth flew about. Flew? I don't know. There was nothing more disgusting than this, but it was not the time to be concerned about such details. I continued on for a while, but nothing turned up. I wanted to search more thoroughly, but I was still on the phone. I shouldn't keep Oshisan waiting for too long. Later, when mom got back, I'd have to ask her if there was a needle. I hastily began scribbling on the notepad affixed to the refrigerator with a magnet. Was there a needle? I scrawled for words with a red pen. I then dashed back up the stairs where I had been keeping Oshisan waiting for far too long. Okay, we're now getting the red words. So, question. Hmm. That's the first thing. True. That was scribbled in red pen. I have a question. Um, Keiichi took Oishi-san along with the mobile part of their house phone. He didn't. He took him upstairs. Oh, yeah. I thought you meant Why downstairs. Why didn't he take him along back downstairs? Because out of shock, he dropped it and ran downstairs. Oh, fair enough. Hello. How did it go? I couldn't find it. I was really overwhelmed when it happened and... I see. It would be great if you could find it. Keep it safe. That's right, the needle wasn't the only incident. I had to tell him about this morning with a hit and run. Uh, also, Oishi-san, that isn't all. Actually, this morning, that van was definitely aiming for me. I could say that without question due to the circumstances at the time. Did you see the license plate? I can search for it from here. Damn! At the time, I just flipped out yelling at him, but I didn't look at the plate. What failures on my part with a needle and the plate number? I was so focused just protecting myself that I let some of the most important details slip out of my grasp. I punched my pillow, annoyed at how worthless I was. I, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know how much more than... I don't know much more than it was a white van. 
Nothing to fret about, my Bara son. Anyone would be shaken up after being hit. I guess all of this is really... It isn't a coincidence, is it? Oh, she son started to hem and haw over on the other end. I could imagine him folding his arms. Also, Reyna is acting strange. How so? What Reyna said on the way home today. Asking why it was so much like Satoshi-kun. Now I could say it with confidence. That Reyna knew what happened to Satoshi. She knew that there was more to it than him just simply disappearing. Reyna knows. She knows something regarding what happened to Satoshi, the kid who was demoned away last year. What would that be exactly? Reyna said, I was the same as Satoshi. She said something to the effect that the way things are going, I'll end up with the same fate as Satoshi. Fate, you say? Exactly what kind of fate did she say would befall you? Um, transferring out, she said. Transferring out? Reyna said Satoshi transferred out. So given how things are going with me, I'll transfer out too. Oshisan let out a stern sign and then grumbled loudly. <laughs> My Barasan, that was probably some sort of threat or maybe some type of warning. I thought so too. At that point, I started to think. Would it be prudent to sum up everything that had happened up until now as the machinations of some human perpetrator? Other than the theory of it being Reina and the others, I was left with Oyashiro-sama's curse actually existing as the only explanation. Of course, I couldn't tell that to Oishi-san. Except, Reina's strange behavior could be proof of either scenarios. Whether it was Oyashiro's Kano's curse being real or everything being part of conspiracy committed by all the villagers. Reina was involved. Reina had to know something. Reina was suspicious. What exactly was Reina? I couldn't help but think she was somehow involved with a prior string of mysterious deaths. I seem to recall that Oishi-san had admitted that he had dug into Reina's past a little. He was probably just downplaying it when he said a little. Meaning he had actually dug pretty deep, most likely. I wanted to hear about Reyna. I wanted to know what happened at her previous school, among other things that were still unknown to me. If Reyna was somebody I should sp suspect... No, not that. I wanted to know the truth. Tonight, I was alone in this huge house. Even though I said I couldn't count on him, I had lost the security I felt I had just by my parents being around. It wasn't like this house was some sort of fortress or castle. If a malicious person decided to use brute force, they'd easily gain entry. There were no other residences close to the Maibara residence. No one would be able to hear anything, no matter how loud it was. I had never felt as much resentment towards my father's artistic temperament and the fact that he had his house built at such a remote location as I did right now. <laughs> oh god. Ah, uh, heck no. Heck no. We are not opening that door. Go to the door and yell, I'm sorry, my parents are out at the store and I've got diarrhea. You're still standing outside the door, aren't you? Yeah, but I'm currently shitting myself. <laughs> to prove a point, push some under the door. Just Again, just go with fart really loudly to get the point across. I wonder if I would still be able to hear... I wondered if I would still be here by tomorrow morning. So I had to ask. Right now. Because I had no idea when the next chance would come. Does he not hear the doorbell? We are not going to the door. This is more important. The goal is you don't want them to know your parents are. Yeah, but if you can just go with something slightly more believable, they could be back in a moment. I'm shitting myself right here in the entryway. <laughs> Just squeeze the hand cream. <laughs> um, Oishisan, I have something I wanted to ask about. Please don't keep anything from me. Sure, ask away. Even though he was so far on the other end of the line, this was the most reliable he had ever felt. I wanted to ask. Say you and your parents all have diarrhea together. 
That is like the worst thing, though. Especially we if only you have only have, have one, one bathroom. bathroom. And we're three people. <laughs> that is like the worst thing that's going to happen. My mom's using a bucket in the garage. My dad is in the toilet. And I'm in the kitchen. I don't know what to do. I used a cooking pot we use oh, for God. community cooking. Oh, <laughs> Help! Where did my life go wrong? <laughs> my parents were also <laughs> shitting themselves. We got food poisoning from our makeup pack of pork ramen. Oh, this would be uh, so bad. I should have known when it was marked down by half a price. <laughs> I don't mm. think the people at the door are gonna go away, though. No. About Reyna. About what happened at her previous school. Actually, regarding Reyna's... I noticed the sound that had been going on for a while now. Since I was so focused on the call, I hadn't paid attention to that first, but I finally realized it was the doorbell. The time was... 7 o'clock. It was past the time the postman would be making a delivery and past any sensible time for a neighbor to be visiting. I considered just acting like nobody was home, but that wouldn't be good. That would ruin all the work I put in making it look like my parents were home. I need to answer the door. Hello, my barasan? Uh, sorry, someone seems to be at the door. I'm going to go see who it is. Take me along. Take me along. Stay on the phone. Take me along. Get into the car. Come to Hinamizawa to where I live. You know where I live. No, Get but on, stay the, on the phone and stay on the phone for, with me for a moment so that we... Don't even do that. Just stay on the phone. Open the door and go like, oh, hey, Reina, it's you. Give me a sec. I have a phone call. And then the person on the phone knows who's there then they know someone is listening along. It's like the safest thing. <laughs> Please leave. <laughs> I can't. I might on you right so that... I'm sorry. The stains <laughs> are everywhere. I'm sorry, I'm also on the phone with my uncle who's currently shitting himself. It's dripping down from the ceiling. It's running down my leg. <sighs> oh, God. This is the way uh, Ryo Kishi 07 and Tenment were going to be played, right? <laughs> With these thoughts in my mind. I guess. I see. My apologies. Should we end this phone call now? That would be a problem. Uh, no, I'll be back in a second. Do you mind if I just leave the phone on? It's fine. I don't mind. Take him along. Why don't we? I drop the handset on my bed and dash down to the door. And why not at least drop him somewhere downstairs? But no. It's my uncle. He's shitting in the back of the dog. You have my parents. <laughs> I mean, shit. No. I'm shitting. Modernat, you seem awfully adept at this storyline. <laughs> How often have you used this to get out of things? <sighs> Groundhog, no. <laughs> Groundhog, just, just tell people we're shitting. <laughs> this is oh yeah, shit Osama's curse. Shouldn't have eaten, eaten that mega pack of pork ramen. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> like all ten packages. I didn't just eat one. I started stress eating because I was being paranoid. So I ate the whole pallet of cup ramen. Hey, sometimes, especially as a kid... You make decisions yes. that aren't too good. <laughs> so I was can't come into work today, right? <laughs> <Family. sighs> What's your party got stuff? The futon was cursed. The futon was cursed. Yeah, maybe. Are there certain not enough? You are into sciencey stuff and things like materials. Are there certain materials that if you burn them and you inhale the fumes, they cause diarrhea? I feel like the world... That has to be a thing. It's a new type of laxative. Now you know what kind of arguments the human side needs to win. 
I, I'm just saying I would be like, I'm now 35. I would be way better at not answering the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You leave the door open and basically hide under the blanket. Shh, they don't know that. My killers don't know that. <clears throat> I needed to make up a good excuse to get him to leave. I had a hunch it was the lady who called right before she sounded. In which case, it would be one of the neighbors who is friends with my mom. I'll just say mom isn't feeling well and went to bed. <laughs> Keiichi, we were making up the story. Please, don't feed into it. I'm trying. Mom is shitting. <laughs> She's busy. I'll just say mom isn't feeling well and went to bed early. That would be the easiest option. Oh, dad? No, he's shitting too. It'd be okay. hard for her to ask me to wake my mom up if she's not feeling well. The bell continued to ring at regular intervals. If someone didn't answer after you rang the bell so much, you'd normally give up and go home, wouldn't you? I'd say me on. Without removing the chair... The chair. Without removing the chain, I opened the door slightly and peered out at the visitor. A chill ran down my spine. I knew it. Somewhere deep inside I had prepared for this moment. I had, to, I had tried to escape by imagining it was the easiest person to deal with. One of my mom's friends. Oh, Verena. I expected Mion to come. I expected the same shot that we had with Mion back then, but maybe with a different face. You know the... Good evening. Verena. There shouldn't be any reason for Verena to come over at this hour. The timing also made me feel uneasy. Because it was just as I was about to ask Oishi-san about Reina. I wish I could have chalked this up to mere coincidence. But those unsettling words from me on several days ago echoed back to me. You know, if he was in his room and he looked outside the window, he would have seen me on, like, hanging down, looking in. Yeah. No, probably like Rika or Satoko. <laughs> like ninjas all around the house. Okay, here we go. Science. I mean, they don't cause diarrhea, but alkyl nitrite causes your anus muscles to relax, which can cause accidental shitting in some people. Oh, that makes sense. I did not know that. Okay. Do we have that in our cupboard? No. You know, just in case the landlord comes. I'm sorry, I have an alkyl nitrite addiction. <laughs> no, we do not have that. Ah, thank you. Thank you for teaching us something. There's nothing... This old man doesn't know. Did she go outside? Why would you leave her house? Hey, don't Why? forget, don't trust the image. Uh, are you alone, Reyna? Yeah. It seems that Mion wasn't with her, but that didn't change the situation at all. Why did you come here? Hey, Keiichi-kun, I'd like you to open the door so we can talk. Can I come inside, I wonder? I wonder? No, it would be weird for a girl to be home alone with a boy, because then things happen. Yeah, I'm sitting on a bucket behind the door so that I could still open up for you. <laughs> Sorry, boss, I'm a popper. <laughs> this is like a portal to another realm. <laughs> that one is actually pretty good. Is it a Minecraft reference? Because it feels like it's a Minecraft reference. I'm going to remember that if I ever need it. I will pay you five bucks if you say that to your boss. And Deal. you... <laughs> <laughs> when? <laughs> Before? During? Mm. After a meeting? During a management meeting. Well, I can do that. The majority knows me well enough. Not with my new colleagues, though. Please don't. I like it that you're employed. <laughs> you owe me five bucks. Ten bucks for me to not say it. You do have a fair point, Mortonard. Was that an agreement? It was true that speaking through a chained door wasn't the right way to talk to a classmate. But... Yeah, but he's ignoring it. Like, do I get the 10 bucks or not? I'm trying to not completely lose 
all credibility trying to deliver the lines the way I think they need to be delivered. Me. Have you seen everything in the last 10 minutes? Yes. That's already gone. I'm trying to keep my balance. Can't tell I've never played Minecraft. I've tried Minecraft once. I, I didn't get it. I, I no, felt I so old. Tell. I cannot tell. You're, you're doing well at hiding. Tifa drives a hard bug. Yeah, I didn't expect to get blackmailed out of my money somehow suddenly. I have a team meeting tomorrow. Please don't. At my house, the chain has to be on at night. Don't worry about it. Then it can't be helped, I guess. When I'm just coming through the window, don't I, Keiichi? And then she just goes... Uh-huh. <laughs> Rena looked at the ground sadly. She kept smiling at least, and her effort to keep that smile up was quite pitiful. Even though she was tugging at my heartstrings, I didn't lower my guard. As long as I stayed like this, even if it made my heart ache, my life wasn't in danger. What I really feared, more than the possibility of hoodlums, more than the possibility that hoodlums would assault me if I removed the chain, was trusting Reyna enough to remove the chain and having my friendship betrayed. As long as the chain wasn't unlatched, even if it made my heart ache, I wouldn't have to deal with being betrayed by Reyna. Since it didn't seem like I'd remove the chain from his silent urging, she appeared to give up on trying to get into the entranceway. Um, have you eaten yet, Keichiko? No, I haven't eaten. Since I have spicy needles. Since my mom wasn't here, dinner wouldn't be ready for no matter how long I waited. I laid down when I got home. I was awoken by the phone and didn't have a chance to eat since I used up all that time talking. I was going to have cup noodles in any case. I could just eat one whenever I wanted to. No, not yet. What about it? Oh god, Vimochi. <laughs> then good. Look here. I brought a bunch of dishes. Those are all poison, aren't they? They all have um, alkyl, alkyl nitrate. nitrate in it. I think I I don't pick Reyna as a chemistry kind of person. I think razor blades and needles and rusty nails are more likely. Nah, Reyna is trying to open that portal to the other world to let in the aliens. Nah, doubtful. Reyna held out a stack of boxes wrapped in a cloth. If I could use your kitchen, I can heat up the miso soup and other stuff. No, you're not You're coming not in. coming into the kitchen. There's knives in the kitchen and other utensils you can hurt people with. Next time we should just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, <Chi. laughs> Don't eat the diarrhea ramen. <laughs> His airpods are in. He can't hear you because he's listening to music. <laughs> But seriously, what time is it supposed to be now? Because we said it's a weird time for visitors. 7 p.m. We just talked about this. 7? Oh. Yeah. It, it's fine. You don't need to do that. But but there's a lot of tofu and vegetables in it. Does Keichiko not like that type of stuff, I wonder? I wonder? There's no way I wouldn't like that. I love miso soup with lots of ingredients. White radish, carrots, burdock root and potatoes, dense and fibrous root vegetables. Yeah, that miso soup looks incredible. I also brought rice, so if you microwave it, it will be ready to eat in no time. Without a doubt, rice needs miso soup. Stuffing rice down your gullet, sipping miso soup in between ravenous bites. Mm. Ah yes, how wonderful it is to be born Japanese. <laughs> With a lot of fibers. Mm -hmm. Back to the iron deficiency problem. But that's exactly what we don't want right mm -hmm. now. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Also, I made some more pickles. I made sensei pickles this time. A hundred percent. In the pickles, there's a needle. In Well, it would be easy to push in a pickle. Yeah, yeah true, true. Because that shape just covers that perfectly. True, but if you like bite off. What if they're small pickles? 
like cornichons, and as still, we call them over here. Still bad off. Besides, you don't need to put a needle in the pickle. The pickle is already dangerous enough as it is. <laughs> Only to you, Tifa. <laughs> I don't know how much that hurt. Throw back to Tifa <laughs> cutting herself in the mouth by eating a pickle that burst. Before I had moved to Hinamizawa, I scoffed at the mountain vegetables called sansai. But I was captivated by their charm the first time I tried them. Such a deep yet light flavor. Those so-called supermarket vegetables taste rough and overpowering in comparison. If you had to describe them, then they were the vegetables for the uninitiated. To become an expert such as myself, you first had to partake of sansai. It was common knowledge around here that the Ryugu family's traditional pickles were wonderfully delicious. Ah, no matter what kind of pickles they were, they'd go so well with that fluffy white rice. She knows exactly uh -huh. how Pickle to get tiny. it. And also, mm. also... But wait, there's more! So delicious. It just seems so delicious. You can leave it at the door. Thank you. Farewell to my unhealthy self who said he'd make do with cup noodles. Reina appeared to be in good spirits and she was offering such a delicious sounding dinner. The stress evaporated from my gut and hunger reared its voracious head. He's gonna let her in, oh. you skip the line. Space bar. No, I just made it disappear. At the same time, my wariness of Reina suddenly dwindled. Suddenly! Food. food. I'm telling you, food is the answer to everything. Liebe geht durch den Magen, as we say in Germany. Exactly. Love goes through the stomach. Reina did say she was alone. It shouldn't be a problem letting her inside. But the possibility that it was laced with poison still hadn't been ruled out. At that moment, a cold chill ran down my spine once again. I couldn't understand why such a sensation had occurred just then. But the voice inside me was sounding the alarm. And rightfully so. This happy Rainer, speaking of his charming dinner, was dependent on one premise. And that premise was that tonight dinner hadn't been made at my house. Meaning it was under the assumption that my mom, who should be making it, wasn't here. True. At, at any I... normal household, 7 o'clock would be around the middle of dinner time. I didn't even think about yeah. that. Why would yeah. she even bring dinner? Yeah. That means she knows. If my mom were here, we'd be eating dinner around this time as well. The fact that she brought over all the makings of a meal at this time was inherently strange. Unless... <coughs> Tifa's been poisoned Sorry. too. <laughs> I feel the pine needle <laughs> in my throat. Unless she knew. Reina? Did she... Did she know that my parents were at home? But... There was also the chance that this was a bluff. I had turned on the lights and a bunch of other stuff to make it seem like my parents were here. There was a chance that Reina was unsure if my parents were home. But I had to wonder. The laundry, the garage, the evening paper. There were plenty of signs of them being hastily tidied up. It was hard to say that Reina didn't have a chance to determine if my parents were here or not. But there was no reason for me to confess that right now. I should try holding on to the fact as long as I could. First of all, the chain was still latched. As long as I didn't take it off, Reina wouldn't be able to do anything to me. Other than to reach inside and grab you. Uh, I'm quite grateful, but dinner will be ready pretty soon. Huh? Is that so? Is that so? I mean, it's not a lie. It's not even saying his parents will make it, but he could be making something. Yeah. Pro tip. If you struggle with um, lying, it helps if you really have to. I, I don't suggest you should be lying willy-nilly, but sometimes in life you have to. My trick um, is semantics, actually. If I find a wording that is not fully a lie, it helps me to sell it. Fair enough. I know you went through all the effort on everything, but well... Unable to think of a good way to refuse my words trailed off weakly. But some of this could work as side dishes, I think. I think. I'm sorry, we have more than enough already. My mom always makes quite a few sides, so... Huh? You have side dishes? She's gonna ask what? Isn't that a common thing? 
With a smile that bordered on a cringe, I dodged her questions apologetically. With a smile that bordered on a cringe. The painful... I don't even know. I, I need to see how it looks. This is the closest I can do to a real life troll face. With chin forward. Doesn't work. That's more creepy than cringe. But the feeling I tried to ignore began creeping up my back again. I spoke as if my mom was setting down dinner right now, but it didn't mesh well with what Rena was saying. Rena was talking as if she was aware of some obvious fact, and that I was aware of it as well. What I'm also aware of is that I need a short break to get some water. Well, time to let Keiichi Kun cook in the meantime, I guess. <laughs> B -B. We're back. We're back. I had to do this for so long, like, I know you did it, I even told you to do it, but my body still reacted. Yeah, because you also did the thing, you also said it. True. Can we find a... Ooh, can... do you remember um, the Disney Channel? They had this thing where they had an actor, actress, whatever, have like this glowy stick and then in the corner of a the screen they drew the Disney Channel logo. Oh, I should remember, like they're moving really fast. They did not move really fast, they tried to draw the Disney Channel logo. No, but <laughs> they didn't just go... Then I didn't say anything. They did for... Mm, 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 mm. Something like that. I'm bad at it. Then I guess no. We can try to figure out a way that we both do a motion like this, but like a heart shape. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, We're back. It, it needs work. We need our own like team rocket, prepare for trouble, but make a double kind of thing. We can practice during our vacation. We won't. <laughs> so, Keiichi Khan. Keiichi Khan. <laughs> so, <laughs> Keiichi Kun can cook. This is a deceptively hard line to read. So, Keiichi Kun can cook. What did you make, I wonder? No, well, it's not that I... Rena had assumed out of nowhere that I had made the dishes. Because she knows. No, not so much that I had made them, but rather that my mom hadn't. Did you really make them? The side dishes? Did you, keiichi it, it wasn't me who made them. My mom did. No, she's making them. Right now? So, you see, I I'm sorry, but I can't eat what you brought. Rena fell silent at that moment. At that moment, I felt that the light had suddenly disappeared from her eyes. How about I try guessing what Keiichi-kun's dinner will be? Is it a mega pack of pork ramen? Is it gonna be needles? And ginger? With an egg? Uh, it doesn't matter what I'm going to eat? Let's see. And click. The conversation might appear natural at first glance, but Rena was firmly in control. It felt like I was being interrogated. Your dinner. I wonder, is it something that can be made with just hot water? Yes, I'm actually on a diet. I'm just going to have a cup of tea. She Literally just guessed that almond. Really, Tifa? I I'm didn't... just saying. I know. Didn't seem like you knew. Yes and, Tifa. First rule of improv. Yes and. You and your yes and. You never do the yes and yourself. Give me something to work with. Hey, hey now. Do you do listen to this? <laughs> Am I wrong? Yes. <laughs> Matter of fact. <laughs> Gas lights are cool? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> see? See? That's called playing along. No. Uh, hey now, stop with your insults. I can't believe you'd belittle my mom's extravagant dinner like that. Tickets sold out, full capacity already. It's that amazing. I tried my best to put on a strong front, but I couldn't grit my teeth quite right. So instead, I looked like someone who was borderline hysterical. 
But Rena showed no reaction whatsoever, even to that silliness. Okay, Chikun. Did your mother really leave you dinner? Leave you dinner. She knows. No, you see, she didn't leave me dinner. She's making it right now. It's almost time for dinner. Reina had taken that assertion of mine, that my mother was home and making dinner right now, and was completely ignoring it. I could tell that the more I panicked, the colder Reina became. Hey, Kechikon. At that moment, an uncomfortable chill crept in from the gap in the doorway. It's kind of funny because now I got goosebumps. <sighs> Is your mom home, I wonder? I wonder? I couldn't keep up this charade anymore. Reina, she knew full well that my parents weren't home. But I'd come too far to admit that now. Anyway, my parents were here and we'd be having dinner soon. And that was the situation I had concocted. So I answered. I told her she was here. Sh she's here, of course. I could feel the humidity drying out from the surrounding air. Rena's eyes were becoming even more frigid, piercing me with their gallant glare. Why? I was waiting for this. Huh? What do you mean? I tried acting casual, but that facade was torn of me the instant I looked into Rena's eyes. That look, it informed me of Rena's response faster than she could open her mouth. There's the shot I was waiting for. I <laughs> called that, but it was too soon. Why have you been lying to me, I wonder? I wonder? Some men are going to look at this and go, I can fix her. This is where you just go, close the door. Yeah, where's the bat? I, I'm not lying. That's a lie, isn't it? It's not a lie. Lies! Rena's outburst sent a jolt surging through my body. Rena and I were still separated by that few inches that slightly ajar but still chained door could afford. But despite that, I was still being cornered. My house, which I'd considered a safe haven until now, had become more like a dark alleyway where no one could save me. Shall I guess your dinner, Keiichi kun? Let's see. I knew now that Reina had already known that my parents would not be here tonight. But it was still so strange that it had come to this. <laughs> Lying is not cute, Keiichi. I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> Honesty is essential for a relationship, Keiichi. <laughs> Tell me lies. Tell me sweet little lies. Da, 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 da. I forgot the rest of the lyrics to that song as well. <sighs> Even if she somehow knew that my parents weren't home, there was no way she should be able to guess what I'd be eating tonight. But Raina said she'd guess. How could she guess it? How could she know it was instant? Cup noodles. That's right, isn't it? That I was going to eat? Wait. The cooking repertoire of a man who can't do housework is probably nothing but cup noodles after all. Looking at this statistically, it was the most probable answer. Just for this, I would now have like a sandwich. So there's a person giving you the death glare through a door and your brain just goes, let's look at this statistically for a moment. I don't get why we're entertaining her at all. Close the door. That didn't mean... She was guessing. I don't think you'll be full with just noodles. I think having rice and stuff will definitely hit the spot. Calm down, Keiichi Maibara. This was just coincidence. Rena was just reading certain tales of mine. So the fact that she was inferring what I was thinking alarmed me. But it wasn't as if she was actually reading my mind. If it was being read, then she was a demon. No. Not a demon. Things like that? They couldn't possibly exist. Do you like them? Do you mean noodles? No. Fucker? What? 
One, is that two, to be a curse three, word? four, five, six, seven. What? Go to the next line. Maybe it makes more sense. What? I have no clue what's even supposed to be in there. Does this make more sense if you play in Japanese? Also, why do we have a censored version? Is that supposed to be censored? Can one of you who played through this explain this? Not like what she's saying, if that's a spoiler, but like, is this supposed to happen? Did I, I break really, the game? I really think it's censored. Do you like them? Do you mean noodles? No. Like, that's where you could put a rhetorical, like a sarcastic sort of answer. Of course, it's okay, so it's not censored, censored. It might be a brand name. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll take it. Reyna indicated that the point my answer was addressing was wrong. Her rebuttal was so short that I momentarily didn't understand the words Reyna had spoken. S sorry, Reyna. What did you say just now? Hmm? Huh? About what? Just now you asked me if there was something that I liked, didn't you? It wasn't long before I regretted how carelessly I'd pushed forward with that question. Oh, we just didn't hear. Do you like them? You mean noodles? No? Bitches? <laughs> I love bitches. Fry them, stew them, stick them in a pot. That's potatoes. <laughs> oh my god, Samwise Gamgee would be shamed by you. I've seen many books and like other written forms of media convey the message that character didn't audibly understand what was being said. This threw me off. It was such a simple answer. That was why I wasn't able to comprehend it. Pork bone and ginger flavor. She even knows the type. Where did they buy the stuff? Was it at Mion's family store? It didn't say. Besides, I don't think they had a convenience store. It was clothing and stuff. Didn't they sell everything? I don't remember. I wondered how I appeared in the moments my mind went completely blank until the moment I was able to recover. As my field of view began to distort, slowly swirling in a counterclockwise direction, I lost all sense of balance. Counterclockwise. Counterwise, as some that people That should be counterwise. That's a big typo. Why do you know that? I didn't even deny it. <laughs> because it's the same as our transferred friend. That was the type of frenzied state I was in. How could Reyna know even this? Not even caring as I mashed my head against the door, I fixated my gaze on Reyna. But she didn't even flinch when she saw me do that. I certainly did buy them. I, I bought a bunch at once. I bought a whole case. How could you know that? Why, I wonder. Quite strange, isn't it? Isn't it? How could you dodge the question at a time like this? The chain and the door suddenly were no longer protecting me. How do you know? Why do you know? Answer me! You bought them at 7th Mark, a uh, Mart, didn't you? I genuinely can't tell if you're joking about <laughs> counterclockwise. One of our very first streams, uh, actually no, not one of our first, one of our first after we uh, became, what's the word? Affiliate. Affiliates. Uh, was trying on stream to play through Castlevania Lords of Shadow. A lot of shadow? I forget. Guess what you knew. It's a pretty good game. We we dropped it at some point because we just couldn't. Um, but don't know if you ever played it. There is a lot of um, spinning sticks clockwise and counterclockwise happening at points. And Tifa could not for her life say counterclockwise. For Tifa, it was always clockwise or counterwise. 
Because why say many letter when less letter gets the message across? That's a true fact. It's also one of our loading, set, screen, loading messages. screen messages. Yeah. That's deep lore. That happened like four years ago, I want to say. Nah, Almost four years. Not four, four years ago. Four and a half. And it wasn't that long ago. Tifa I has a point, does Shiva? I usually do. I hate it when I spin counterwise. Not four. Yeah, I want to say yeah, four. Yeah, no, nah, it wasn't that. No. Is this not a three and a half? Yeah. If anything, more like three, two and a half. It wasn't that long ago. Semantics. It's been a while. Could be. Ha! Huh. Thank you, Evie. Thank you. I agree. It feels like three and a half. A long time ago. <laughs> September 2020. <laughs> A shiver ran up my spine. I tried covering it up with an angry facade. Like I said, why do you know that? I was behind you, following you the whole time. What are you saying? This is very creepy. I couldn't understand why she was saying she'd been following me all this time. Wait, Rena, can you stand here for a second while I go and grab my fucking phone that I left upstairs on the bed? Uchi-san just sitting there like at the police station, like picking his nose, flicking it away, like... Ah, oh, I should do my nails again. <laughs> That's because Rena was right behind Keiichi-kun's back. The whole time. <laughs> okay, so um, you know how people Creepy. value different things in relationships, and there are some people who who would prefer a clingier person over a more distant-seeming person. Yes, I'm not sure. I'm waiting for Keiichi to go, oh, Reina is just perfect girlfriend material. She she just can't stay being away from me. She even just stalks no. me in the store. No, no one. Oh, my God. Like that night? That night I was absorbed in my phone conversation with rishi -san. I didn't even sense her being there, standing behind the door, behind me, standing there, just like that. I mean, it's a bit harder when someone is behind the door, isn't it? No? She's always in your shadow. She's basically... Uh, crap, what's that character? Uh, there's a character... I think it's from Naruto or something. That like... Or was it Jojo's Bizarre Adventure? A character that can like live in your shadow, like go into it. it doesn't ring a bell anymore. Oh no, it wasn't Bastard. It was one of those shadow ninjas. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Pride doesn't. Oh, wait, there's. Wait, a full metal alchemist, right? There's also a character with an ability there. I remember things. Thank you. Yes, like that. When Keiichi was picking out the noodles, I was watching the entire time. You picked out so many different flavors, didn't you? Then your mom got angry. If you were going to pick the expensive ones, then you should just pick one type, she said. Then Keiichi Kun picked out that big box of pork bone and ginger flavor that he loved so much, didn't he? I like it too. Pork bone noodles. I can never eat a whole big bowl myself. My brain was paralyzed dulling my senses. It might have been a defense mechanism to diminish the fear was feeling to non-traumatizing levels. With the fear being diminished, the fog enveloping my mind was cleared away. Then I could understand what Reyna was saying and started to put meaning behind her words. Even so, my fear hadn't subsided completely. It was like I was standing at the edge of a cliff Eyes closed, so I didn't have to look down. It didn't actually solve any of the basic problems. I slowly took a step backwards. And as I withdrew, Reina advanced. So, Keiichi-kun, 
Can you open this? No. Ah, what apps are this? What makes you think? We can eat dinner together. I'm sure it's going to be delicious. So, okay. Reyna's pale slender fingers squirmed through the crack in the door one at a time as if they had a mind of her own rattling the chain. If she had unlatched the chain from the front door, a feeling of terror would have just exploded within me. But Reyna didn't do that. She was simply imploring me to remove the chain. I tried my hardest to light the fuse to the powder keg in my heart, trying again and again. Clatter, clatter. What's the clattering sound? But it doesn't light. It doesn't light. Open up. Okay, Chico. I fully get that he's paralyzed with fear. If uh, this, this might sound condescending, it's not supposed to. If you've never felt fear to the point where it makes you freeze physically, I envy you. I never thought that's a real thing. I've seen it in movies, I've read about it in books, I've seen it in stories. I never believed that's a real thing. I always thought it's like a like a matter of fiction, until I had mononucleosis. My throat was so swollen, so inflamed. It was so much pain, I could not swallow my own spit. I could barely breathe through my mouth. But I knew I had to drink water, because there's only so many days you can go without water before that's really bad for your body. So at some point, I forced myself, I swallowed through the pain. And after two, three tiny sips, I was holding the glass, I, I was doing the math. I had not drank anything with a high fever for two days. I need to drink this glass of water. I must, I need liquids to survive. I was holding the cup to my lips and I, I could not move. My body locked down. I stood there. This, I'm not exaggerating. I stood there for five minutes in front of a mirror. I knew I should move. I knew I should just tip the cup slightly and just make it go down somehow. Just swallow through the pain. I couldn't. I mean, hurting yourself is quite hard. Yes. Yes. So I get the being afraid of something, of the pain or in this moment that the terror just strikes you and you just freeze up. But if somebody tries to get through a door and it's locked like this and they're dumb enough to put their hands in between, I would say the smartest thing you can do, if you're not frozen by fear, kick the door shut as hard as you can. At, at, at worst, it just knocks the other person away. At best, it really fucks up their hands if they got them in there like that. Yeah, but that could get us into deeper shit. Oh, really? The person that was trying to... Who are they going to believe if she goes like, oh, Keiichi lost his mind? Not us. If I can I have, tell you that. Not if, us. If I have to choose between dealing with that and being murdered in my home by a crazy psycho bitch, I'll take the getting into trouble. Mm. If, if it really seems like this, like a life or death scenario, I will storm the door. <laughs> and if, well, that's if the question. all ten fingers fall down on the inside of a house, fuck your hands. No. P please go away. I beg you. Please go away. This is the time where you smash the door, yeah? <laughs> Hell no, I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> Heck no. Everybody has a plan until they get hit in the face. I think Mike Tyson said this. Keiichi, oh. I'll go to school early, I'll get a bat, I'll start swinging practice, uh, I'll be able to protect myself. Bullshit. Well, the thing is, you never know how you react when the moment is actually there. 
Like yes. that's the scary can... thing. Like I can now think of, oh, if this happens, I would probably do this or I will just act like this. But yes. still it's there. You do not know how you yes. react. You can prepare yourself for it. And especially in a situation like this, that's a smart thing to do. But just because you prepared for it, just because you anticipated being attacked, doesn't mean that in the moment you can execute on it. And if, if this adds the whole level of like, I want to say emotional abuse, because I can't think of a better term than gaslighting what Reyna is doing. Like she keeps buttering, softening him up with her sweet and demure demeanor. Like, I wonder, are you so cute? Do you want to eat my dinner one now with me? We're... They're driving us insane. And then the moment you let your guard down, this Rainer shows up. How can you say something so mean, I wonder? I wonder. I can't do this with a high voice. Please go away. Go away. Go away. The powder keg inside me finally went off. No smoldering. It just exploded. I tackled the door. Wait, tackled. Thank you, Kate. If he tackles the door, it's I'll go, it opens. No, the, the door opens inwards. Thank you, Keiichi. Thank you. The door? What do you mean the door opens outwards? The images are just there to give you ideas. The door opens inwards. Otherwise, he couldn't tackle the door. Wouldn't be a point. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That would be weird because then he opens it. The force through the door had knocked Reyna momentarily off balance. I couldn't hesitate here. Oh, he did actually tackle the door. I grabbed onto the doorknob with both hands, planted my feet firmly and pulled with all my might. Okay, you were right, I was wrong, same outcome. But that slamming sound I so desired didn't happen. She put her feet in between. I could feel a tiny disturbing bit of resistance keeping the door from closing. Ah, uh, the fingers were still in. And the source of that was Rainer's fingers. Each of those fingers wriggling, squirming around like the tendrils of a carnivorous plant through the cracks in the doorway. I want to say, by the way, that that emoji is the smile on the edge of cringe. Yeah. I, I, uh, like yeah. if you want to put... Like an image to it? Yeah. I think that's it now that I see it. <laughs> no, they are stuck in there. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> it hurts. It hurts, Keiichi Kun. It hurts. <sighs> it wasn't a harsh shriek, but more of a yelp she was trying to keep back. Go away. Go away. Go away. I kept on pulling on the door with all my might. I didn't even realize that if I didn't loosen my pull on the door, at least momentarily, Reyna wouldn't be able to pull her fingers out and that was why the door wasn't closing. It really hurts, keiichi I'm sorry if I was messing around too much, huh? I didn't care one bit for her apology. No matter how much she apologized, it didn't change any of what she had done up until now. I, it didn't change anything. It hurts. It hurts. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go away. Go away. Go away. Reyna couldn't leave even if she wanted to because I trapped her fingers. Reyna's white fingers had become deep red and were no longer even squirming. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go away. Go away. Go away. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Reyna's apologies were occasionally twisted with pain, but like a broken record, she was intent on repeating it over and over. Go away, go away, go away, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it! I pulled on the door even harder. Finally, Reyna's fingers were somehow able to slip out from their imprisonment in the doorway. The moment that happened, the door closed soundly and I could hear the thud of Reyna falling on her butt on the other side. I locked the door immediately. It made a loud clunk, voicing my rejection to Reyna. 
I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, Chikun, I'm sorry. Open up, Gay okay, Chikun. Reyna leaned against the door, apologizing profusely and nothing else. After confirming that I was sufficiently sealed off from her, I tugged away, I trudged away from the entryway. On the other side, I could still hear Reyna echoing her apology. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Those pitiful words, they would be forever seeking my forgiveness. I didn't feel bad about this at all. But that wasn't out of any sort of malice. I just, I felt a sort of hazy sense of relief that I was able to escape from Reyna. Before Mion had threatened me at this doorway, saying there was nothing she didn't know. And just now at the same place, Reyna told me the same thing. My, my feeble attempts to disguise the fact my parents ran home had served no purpose from the start. I should have just pretended to be out and not even opened the door. My meager plans hadn't helped at all. In Hinamizawa, it was impossible to outwit them. Even though I was on the other side of the door, I wanted to get as far away from Reyna as possible. One step, two steps, with each one her sniveling apologies became more distant. Why is my stomach twisted? <laughs> I expected the fingers to be cut off and regrown tomorrow. I was waiting for that too. Like, especially with the red over the screen. And then the, I was suddenly able to close the door. I fully expected one of the lines to be... And I looked down and I saw the tips of her fingers laying there. That would have been awkward. It would have. Don't get it twisted. I feel like that's also from a song, but I... No, don't get it twisted. Uh, epic rap battle, Barack Obama versus Mitt Romney. Yeah. Now, uh, don't get it twisted. We'll see how pretty your face is after my fist is kissed it. Yeah, that was it. Reading this made me feel sick. So is she still on the phone? I sprinted up the stairs and drove into my room. How the fuck do you remember that? I must have listened to it, I want to say, easily a hundred times since it's come out. All I like the, the epic rap battles. All of the epic rap battles are a standard thing in the playlist. Yeah, together with the Arcane soundtrack. And lately, uh, all the songs on Has Been Hotel. As you would expect, I was finally no longer able to hear Reyna repeating her endless apology. Starts with sorry. Spoilers. Not really. <laughs> Diving into my bed, I was startled by the hard lump I felt. There was something in my bed? In the phone. It was the receiver. I finally remembered. I was in the middle of a call with Oishi-san. Looking at the clock, apparently not much time had passed since I went downstairs. It was probably five minutes. Could it be that my clock had run out of batteries? I had talked with Reyna for so long. How did almost no time pass? But the hand on the clock was ticking forward one second every second as usual. As I put the still warm receiver to my ear, time, which felt frozen, began moving once again. Hello? Oishi-san? Sorry to keep you waiting. No, not at all. I didn't wait that long. It became apparent that the amount of time that had passed between myself and Oishi-san was different. Over the phone I could hear an energetic voice from a sports program or something. It drove home just how far away Oishi-san really was. Reina came just now. Did you come to play? I wasn't confident that I could coherently explain the situation to Oishi-san. But I didn't need to right now. Right now I needed to know about Reina. I get this, but tell the policeman about what just happened. You've been attacked. It's hard to explain this. Yeah, it's, it's one of those super high stakes moments where your brain just like goes one way and 
like either it's like super focused or it's just like trying to reach for normalcy like oh yeah Oishi-san I was trying to have a conversation I had a question let me ask this like I need to regain control of my life yeah <sighs> It's hilarious how who was phone is immediately outclassed by who's at the door. Yes. The phone was just to distract us. But who was door should have been a thing. That's right. I was planning to ask Oishi-san more about Reina, but Reina's little visit had interrupted the conversation. What was true and what was false, I, I couldn't tell. The one thing I knew was the single grim reality that Reina was suspicious. I might be able to figure something out if I asked Oishi-san about her. Up until now I had regretted it whenever I forced myself to ask about things that I was better off not knowing. But looking at it that way, you could say I'd hit rock bottom. There was no possible way I could feel any more regret than I did right now. No, however, I wanted to know if there was anything beyond this I would regret more. Forget about tomorrow, it wasn't out of the realm of possibility for something to happen tonight. I wanted to know everything I could. I was absolutely not going to die like this. Not without knowing anything. I definitely won't. Regarding Reina Ryugusan, I did a bit of digging. Yeah, well, it wasn't much. I understood that Oishi-san was talking in circles. A bit meant I dug so deep it'd be hard to discuss with you since you're a friend. I want to know everything from your research. I don't think you'll be very interested in what I have to say, though. Oishi-san. I spoke as calmly as possible to Oishi-san, who was continuing to avoid the issue. And then I said it. I think Reina Ryugu is suspicious. Even if a past incidents were from Oyashiro-sama's curse, Reina Ryugu is involved. Do you have some sort of proof that makes you believe Reina is suspicious? The manner in which Rishi-san spoke became very firm. Do you have some sort of proof that was him talking as a detective? I only have circumstantial evidence. I see. I could tell even over the phone how disappointed Rishi-san was. Pulling on the fishing line when he felt the bite only to reel in the bait Disappointed but ready to cast the line out once more. That's how it seemed. Oishi-san, you can't do anything without physical proof, can you? What I meant was, you can't come and save me without proof. I stuck that barb in there. As Oishi-san loved roundabout ways of saying things, he understood me just fine. It's fine, my barber son I'll protect you. That was not the least bit reassuring. Oishi-san was just using me to continue his investigation. I was just going to get killed and my corpse would be an important piece of evidence. That's all I was to him. Whether I'm alive or dead may be of no concern to your investigation, but it's all over for me when I die. Oishi-san went silent on the other end of the line. That may have been too blunt, but I didn't care. All I needed to relate to Ishi-san was that I was currently in a very dangerous position. So please, tell me. Tell me about Reina. Satoshi transferred out. Not too far in the future, I'll probably also do what Reina called transferring out as well. But you won't be able to find my corpse. You haven't even been able to find Satoshi's body yet. Alright, my Bara-san, please calm down. I was already suppressing my agitation even without Oishi-san having to tell me. It wouldn't solve anything if I continued to scream about my mistrust in the police. It would seem that I could only depend on myself and the bad Satoshi left behind to protect myself. And I at least wanted to know about what happened before Reina transferred schools. You're aware that this won't be very interesting, right? Oishi-san, realizing my resolve couldn't be swayed, finally caved. Right now, to me, there is nothing that I'll find uninteresting. Please. There are a few things I need you to agree to. Okay? Please keep this confidential. Also, part of this may be speculation. Not all of it may be true. 
Are you still interested? It might not be true. I, I don't understand what you mean. And there isn't one main investigation for the mysterious chain of deaths in Hinamizawa. Each one is treated as its own individual case. Thus, Reina Ryugu has never been linked to any of the investigations. Basically, you see, this isn't an investigation of Reina done by the police. And his personal inquiry is what you're telling me? This will make things a lot quicker since you understand. All of it is from either phone calls or meetings and interviews, so they aren't corroborated. I'm asking you to take all of this with a grain of salt, is what I mean. Do we have an agreement? All of it is just from what you heard. Yes, my apologies, it's all my personal investigation, you see. That thing, before you said you saw Rena's chart, didn't you? I'm sure I heard you say that. Oh, she said, paused for a moment on the other end of the line. I told you that too? <laughs> Please, pretend you didn't hear anything about that. I didn't care about Oishi-san having certain obligations and responsibilities. I also didn't care if there was no proof. Even if there were just rumors, there's no smoke without fire after all. Can we get to the point, please? Please tell me, Oishi-san. Understood. Oishi-san finally opened those tight lips of his. <sighs> there we go. What's this going to be? Also, there was never a break in the things happening around the Watanagashi, no? So it couldn't be like, things happened, then Reina left, then things didn't happen, then Reina returned and things came back. No, it's just been five years, for as far as we know. Unless, unless that is what happened, but we don't know about the previous cases, because they aren't even thought of as having to do with... Oh yeah, she was almost cursed. I mean, I want to say if you're looking into this, even for Oishi, and you go like, hey, 10 years ago, there was the same. And yeah, but then again, 10 years ago, she was like, what, five? Yeah, that too. Yeah. I mean... Currently, that's not known. Then again, some people seem to be born evil. Yeah, that is true. It seemed that Reina lived in Hinamizawa a long time ago. She had moved to Ibaraki Prefecture just before starting elementary school. Then, following that, right after transferring, the unfortunate incident with a breaking of the school windows happened. Then, Reina confided to the doctor. It was Oyashiro Sama. This was everything I knew. You guys are so mean to Reina. She's mean to us. What about us? Yeah. Um... We were nice before. I sincerely hope, because that would make me feel better, that Reyna doesn't have multiple personality disorder or anything of that sort, and that it's always Reyna, and that she just sometimes, for whatever is causing this, acts like that, because if she was actually not in control of when she has these... Let's call them episodes for now. That would break my heart. Mm. You To have such a sweet and innocent person to just go click, like something flipped the switch and then she's this at least borderline murderous piece of shit. That's fucked up. Mm. <laughs> Life is simply... <laughs> yes. There's a much difference between what I know and what you know, my Bauer son. Then what part did you investigate further? I didn't need to ask. It was the incident right before she transferred back to Hinamizawa. The incident Reina was responsible for, and what she divulged to the doctor afterwards, correct? Yes. After you learned about that, you started suspecting Reina and the others, didn't you? Yes, I did suspect them. So, they have a once. After all, uh, no, that's not what I meant by suspect them. Hmm? Oishi-san was the type of person to say things with confidence, but these particular words were less than reassuring. Then, who did you suspect? 
that it was Oyashiro-sama. Huh? That Oyashiro-sama's curse really exists. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> Oishi-san's laugh was quite dry, certainly not the kind that would make you want to join it. Oishi-san uh, Oishi resumed the conversation about the dubious circumstances behind Satoshi's disappearance because of events leading him to delve into Reina's past. No, this is a bad omen. Just then, there was thunder in the distance and a heavy rain started pouring down. It came without warning, a downpour fiercely beating the ground. I had left the window in my room, opened a crack to let the heat out. The violent wind danced into my room, making, up, making the curtains flap wildly. We're gonna close the window and Reina is still standing in front of the door. You are living in a mansion alone without anybody near you. It is quiet outside. The only loud thing anywhere around you are cicadas. You're having a phone call with the police that you don't want the people who are weird and threatening you. You don't want them to hear that. You know one of them already eavesdropped on you and you have that call with your window open. Only a crack. And if you say big words, maybe they get stuck in it. <laughs> Gee, I wonder how they know everything that happens inside this house. What is it? No, nothing. It suddenly started raining heavily. Sorry, please continue. I got up whilst on the phone and grasped the window. I said at the beginning it was an incident, but because neither the school nor the victims filed charges, the police were never involved. So, you see, those involved were very reluctant to talk, regardless of there being a victim who had one eye beaten so badly that it had permanent damage. It could have been the school or possibly some individual who made arrangements to keep this from going public. Also, the psychologist was very strict about their professional ethics. Hello? My Barasan, can you hear me? Why do I think he sees something at the window? Yeah, of course. Why wouldn't you? There was the figure of a person standing by the light near the mailbox this whole time. Even in this torrential rain, they, they didn't have an umbrella. They were unquestionably drenched from head to toe. In this shower, which more resembled a waterfall, droplets of water dripped down from her hair. Just standing there, both arms dangling at her side. In one hand was the stack of boxes wrapped in cloth. Her eyes focused on my room, focused on me as I was about to close the window. Creepy. Her mouth was methodically repeating a chewing motion. It was as if she had something hard to chew in her mouth with her cheeks puffing out. What could she be eating over there? How could it be that at this time I was more enthralled by Reina instead of the shocking developments being brought to light by Oshi-san? If it hadn't started raining, I wouldn't have gone to the window. Then I wouldn't have noticed Reina, nor would I have noticed that. Reina's mouth was moving in the same pattern. She wasn't eating something. She was repeating something. I'm sorry. What was it? Was she repeating to me? What was she saying? And why was I right up against the window, fixated on her? Hello? My Barasan, can you hear me? Hello? I'm sorry? Huh? My Barasan? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hello? My Barasan, what's the matter? Even in this torrential downpour, Reina was still apologizing. 
see your bloody fingers? The other self inside me drew the curtain hastily with my right hand blocking my view of the outside. But even doing that, Rena's relentless apology still reached my ears. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wonder what would happen if you would now let her in. If I forgive you for this, will you forgive me for that? Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. I'm sorry. 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 Damn it. Why should I have to forgive her? I'm the one who wants to be forgiven. What part of me can't you forgive? I won't be killed. If you won't forgive me, then I won't forgive you either. I won't forgive. Won't forgive, won't forgive, won't forgive, won't forgive, won't forgive, won't forgive, won't forgive. My Barasan, if you can hear me, then please respond. Hello? So climbing. Oh, yes, it is. Why am I feeling these things? <laughs> that last bit was really well done. At what point is she gonna go? And when do we go back to school? It's gonna be awkward. Yeah. Let's go to the tips. Start with the uh, marked one. <sighs> nah. I see it in movies quite often, but what is it exactly? Multiple personalities are thought to be escapism. Multiple personality disorder is a form of escape. Correct. The exact mechanism is not fully understood, but it's believed to be a type of defense for the brain to retain mental stability. Hypothetically, poor people imagining themselves as wealthy is a form of escapism, is it not? Is this also a form of multiple personality disorder? I wouldn't go that far, but broadly speaking, one could infer that. It's something that occurs in us all. Does a split personality occur when, when, when one cannot tell which is reality and which is the escape? That's uh, difficult to say. There are some who agree with it and some who disagree. There's no consensus. Then is the occurrence of multiple personalities still an unknown phenomenon? Something not fully comprehended in the psychiatric field? Unfortunately, that is the current state of things. We can only put our hope in future research. But, but it's sort of cool having a split personality. What kind of people get split personalities? Really, dude? <laughs> really? Recent studies that those who recent studies find that those who develop it, or rather those who are more susceptible to developing it, may be genetically predisposed or may have had abnormal mental development. Some say that childhood abuse increases the chances. Speaking of which, person A here experienced abuse as a child, didn't he? How sad. Person sorry, I thought it was you. Person A has seven different personalities. Let's watch a video of him. Right after these commercials. Oh, that was... I remember seeing a video not too long ago of someone who said he had 24 different personalities. Mm -hmm. And like... Even in his bathroom, he had 24 toothbrushes because okay. none of them Fair wanted enough. to share a toothbrush. 
So I, they would all like... I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Like use their own and there was like this whole system to it. Mm -hmm. I can imagine that like gets exhausting. It's like fighting with yourself at points. Um, if you're... I, I would assume if your different personalities have a way to communicate with each other. Because I, I do not know, but like from what I've seen and read and stuff, Aren't there also people where they don't interact with one another? Like when one personality takes over, it's like the others are like dormant, unconscious. And then when they when they are in control again, it's like they snap back. And it's like, where am I? You know? Yeah, a lot of different types, sorts. Interesting field, but I've never yeah. looked too much into it. Is that some trash TV at three in the afternoon vibes? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's like, oh, you have been abused. Uh -huh. How sad. It's a, let's uh, <laughs> pick a random thing that people will have feelings about, but uh, make it marketable, you know, make it, make it something that sells. Spin the chessboard. If that's what a reference, that I don't get it. At the seventh mod. The seventh mod was a bargain supermarket with food and alcohol. See, it's not me on store. Hmm. What's it means this? to look at things from your opponent's perspective. Oh. Fair enough. I've yeah. never heard of that thing. That makes a lot it, of sense. It does. Yeah. A tip about multiple personalities. Wait, you did all of that in caps. <laughs> Would multiple personalities then be the answer? No, because... I mean... They're trying to lead us into something. Like you have to it know... Could, it could go either way. You have the bipolar disorder now you have this and the other one you have drugs or one has that the other has this the other does that <laughs> in other words ryukishi knows exactly what you're thinking yeah uh, i think that's what they're trying to play in like you think yeah. Mion or reina you're thinking there has like, to be a reason it's like but, oh bipolar because of the sudden switch and yeah. you get a bit about bipolar now it could be oh does she have several personalities and it's like oh let's have this bit about personality there has to be a reason that my mind can comprehend right now i need to make sense of things as they are presented to me right now yes it does make sense what's this keiji so many there's no reason to get all the different kinds, is there? I'm sorry, I want variety in my flavor. I flopped all the different colored cup noodle bowls into the cart. Cup noodles have gotten so elaborate recently, and there are a bunch of different types. I want to try each of them at least once. I knew it was pretty selfish of me, but I thought I'd at least give it a try. I mean, fair. With Christmas, we did like a... This year I couldn't get Tifa a hot chocolate calendar because the one I wanted to buy would have to be important, uh, imported from Britain. And because yeah, of Brexit, they didn't do issues. deliveries. Ah, uh, Brexit. It was quite a nice one. Like for every day it had a different type of hot chocolate for two people. That was really nice. That and was it was really, really nice. good hot chocolate. Yeah. We bought some of those things too, but we did a ramen advent calendar. I asked Tifa what she wanted instead. She she said she wants to do like a ramen calendar. Tried several ones. Didn't eat ramen every day. Still have some. And you know what I did after that? Because I really liked the hot chocolate last year and I didn't want it to go without. I gave her some of that hot chocolate too that I found at a different store. Not all of the different types in like little handy bags to just enjoy like that, but the actual cups to make it yourself at home. Yeah, they're nice. That's how adorable I am. Keiichi, buy them in a big case, it's cheaper. Dead falter. Okay, fine. I want these six flavors, so we'll buy 60 in total. They'll last, they'll last forever, they don't go bad. Well, I had a feeling that I'd end up like this. Now that Dad had thrown his head into the ring, I'd have to compromise. Then I'd only get to eat one kind, I'd get bored with it. 
I was resisting as a formality. I'd already given up inside and I wasn't sure which case of noodles to get. If you can't pick, then mommy will pick for you. You don't have to rush me. I quickly search for the cases of noodles for what I want. Pork bone and ginger? Large cup? Hey, Keiichi, can't you get a more normal one? If I let mom pick, she'd err on the side of safety and get soy sauce or salt flavored. So when I plonked a large box of pork bone flavor in the shopping cart, mom looked back at me with an expression as if to say, these ones? The best ones are kimchi from what's the brand? Uh, I Ramyun? think Shin. Shin, Shin Ramyun, I think. Kimchi, Shim Yan Rum. I think that's the brand. Yes, it, it's delicious. If you delicious. try to Google it, it's delicious. <laughs> you'll probably find it anyway. It's spicy, it's so exactly good. on the edge of being one of the spicier things I can eat without my body revolting. But it's really good, it's really tasty. The first bite wasn't great. After the second one, I was hooked. It's one of the best. If you never had kimchi, like it's it's a rather unique kind of flavor, I want to say. But it's nice. I want to say with the ramen it works a bit different because I've also had like kimchi that you bought mm -hmm. once and that I was not a fan That of. was even more pungent. But and, like, the tangy. kimchi ramen is really good. Yeah, it, it's milder than uh, actual kimchi, but it's so tasty. Yeah. Spicy pickled cabbage from Korea. Yeah. Exactly. It's really tasty. Yeah. To show her this was my last compromise, I began, <clears throat> I began explaining the choice. Pork bone is good. You get a large serving, but the flavor isn't too strong. I remembered insisting that the noodles I picked were the right kind. In this frozen memory in time, this encapsulated world, I didn't have the power to look around my surroundings. So I did what I could and reached out of my hearing and vision, sharpening my senses to find the presence I overlooked. It would have been nice now if somewhere Reyna was hidden. Or you saw like a tiny thing, like a bit of her head sticking out, which indicated that she was here. Yeah. No matter how much I searched through my field of vision, I couldn't see Reyna. I rewound the situation, searching. But of course I couldn't find her. Then was she spying at me from my blind spot? I go through the sound and presence again, looking. I could sense the other customers. They were all mixed about, moving as they please. There was nobody looking over this way and no one trying to get behind me. Not here. Couldn't be here. Probably wasn't here. I would definitely notice if someone was right behind me, even when I wasn't on my guard. I smiled wryly at the thought of using a vague word like probably right before contradicting it with definitely. Then I paused my mental replay as a chill ran down my spine. There was definitely a presence like a shadow behind me. That was a terror unlike any other. If a presence really had manifested behind me, I would definitely have turned around to check for it. But the world had moved on and now there was no way for me to turn around. While carrying that frightening shadow on my back, I was gleefully running around the store searching for a case of noodles? Running through the instant noodle section, bad-mouthing my mom. But there was that presence constantly at my back, sticking to me like a shadow. I can just kind of imagine how you pick that one package of ramen out and then there's like Reyna's face behind it, hidden in between. Yeah. The she closet. didn't see her head on the pile of cabbages at the end of our <laughs> Or peeking out yeah. behind the toilet paper. <laughs> like somewhere. One of those cabbages was actually her head. Just because of the shape you didn't realize. Could have worked. I mean, there are actually like ways to make yourself less visible yeah, in public just blend in. like disappear in plain sight basically to just like blend in with your surroundings it's not so much about you you know like in skyrim when they do like the little crouch thing it's less about that it's hey. more like <laughs> if you crouch you're always yeah. healthy if you're good enough you become invisible like a chameleon um blending in with the colors no it's more about becoming 
are appearing so inconspicuous that you just like blend in with a background, like with a whole scenario. <laughs> Konnichiwa, <laughs> like a car. <laughs> you pick up a cabbage. <laughs> you found me. Found me. <laughs> have a Raina everywhere, sister. <laughs> That'd be horrifying. Yes, it would. No way to see what it was. Realizing it now after the fact was horrifying and repulsive. In that moment of time, I was running around gleefully, carrying that cardboard box. Tip tap. But listening to that moment again, I could hear footsteps other than mine going pit pat with every step. I want to take your fingertips home. No, I'll leave mine. There, one more. While I was running, the sound of those barefoot steps going pit pat were right behind me. Me running around gleefully in that closed off moment in time. But I didn't hear it. No, I heard it. That's why I remembered it. I didn't think I had heard anything. That's why I didn't turn around. In a supermarket, if you hear footsteps, you wouldn't really turn yeah, around. It, it's expected. That is why I didn't turn around. In that moment, the pit pat of those footsteps were following me the entire time. I couldn't run faster and escape. I couldn't run any faster than I had run at that time. I couldn't turn around. I hadn't turned around before, not once. Then I returned to my parents and started talking. The shadow-like presence was right at my back. Since I didn't move, the shadow didn't move. That is why it made no sound. That was all. At that time, I hadn't taken a single step while talking with my parents. I was just standing there. This was undeniable. And yet, I heard it. A pit pad. That shouldn't be. If I took three steps, it followed three steps. Wasn't that the rule? There was no other sound other than that. At that time, the entire world had gone dark. A, a sudden darkness. It was the end of my reflective journey. I was tired. I wanted to end it. Someone turned on the light. Except my body couldn't move. As if I was soon into that moment in time. My past self's hair stood on end. That's impossible. Now that's just breaking the rules. I haven't moved. So you shouldn't be moving either. I couldn't move. So you shouldn't be able to move either. Follow the rules. Yet that sound echoed in the darkness once again. The hair on the back of my neck pricked up on end. It was so close that it was hard to tell whether it was touching the hair or not. Why couldn't I move? Like how the presence was moving behind me. I quickly realized I could move. It's just that I was scared and didn't want to. But now was the only time I could turn around was something unforgivable in this moment in time. But I needed to turn around immediately. As if my entire being was trying to force me to stop, I, it began to administer a pain, like a needle being stuck into my every pore. I'll turn around. I'll turn around. I'm not scared at all. I will turn around. I'll turn around. I'm not scared at all. A scream I was unable to vocalize. I turned around. At first, I couldn't understand the meaning of it. What? What? What is this? Just as a person's mouth might bite into an apple, slurp the juices and finally discover that it was an apple, my mind began to process the scene before my eyes by eating the apple. Slurp the juices and discover the apple. Meaning, 
What was in front of me was... Because every now and then he falls apart. Every now and then? That's... What? The end of the tip. I didn't get that one. I guess he was thinking back. At the moment. Uh, Reliving it and having the breakdown. I guess. You didn't save. Yeah, I did. Did you? See? I meant after the tips. Well, now I did again. Yeah, fair enough. A little bit more to make the cliffhanger even worse? No. It's not me, people. It's Tifa. Yeah, but it sucks to like start it and if then something happens to save in the middle of it and then continue in two weeks. Complete buzzkill. I know, right? <laughs> that's Tifa for you. <laughs> no, that sucks. I mean, yeah, it does. Um, Especially for me to do the recap. I mean, in two weeks I'll probably have to click through it. That's anyway. why you watch for what you saw. But then it's gonna might be gone. I guess it is what it is. Life is simply unfair. Yes, it is. Um, I hate how this game is making me feel sometimes. The big question is, who do you think is the killer? Which one? Because I believe there's multiple in the story, as in at least two. Assuming there's only one person carrying out the five murders plus the one that we saw in the beginning because I think that's a different instance. The killer of who? Tomitake? Yeah, I mean there has been several, true. I would not be shocked at all if Reyna being... whatever Reyna turns out to be being. <laughs> Uh, has actually nothing to do with the murder cases and that is actually the guy who got away from the first murder who I guess then became either a high-ranking politician, a police person in a higher position or something. Uh, to really as a distraction to keep you from the plot twist. Well, I think distract... I wouldn't say distraction, it's more like a you know, two things can happen at the same time. Yeah, that is true. While the case of the Watanagashi murders is being solved, hopefully, uh, Reina happens. <laughs> they just seem to... They coincide on a timeline and they, they seem related. Maybe they aren't, maybe. You know, just because some things seem connected doesn't always mean they are. There are coincidences like this. That's true. I'm waiting for Mion to happen. I think Mion is going to be worse, or dealing with Mion is going to be worse than dealing with Reyna, I want to say. Well, to be fair, um, I would imagine all of these girls have gone through something that might severely affect their mental health. Reyna has, again, whatever Reyna has, I'm not even going to hazard a guess. Uh, Mion, we know, always has displayed let's say, a violent streak because she's gotten into trouble for it before. We don't know what exactly, but I would imagine if a police has to show up, it's not just like being a dick to somebody, but physical. Um, Satoko lost her brother and uh, Rika lost her parents. Yeah, I mean, so sure. there's all, some all of sort these, of like trauma. All of these, I think, are traumatic events that can shatter somebody's psyche for lack of better words and make them do things that they wouldn't have done or end up doing things that they wouldn't have done if they had continued living in their usual for them normal circumstances does that make sense yeah it does it does like shape someone yeah uh, the mind is a beautiful and at the same time horrible thing and certain things happening to somebody leave a mark in one way or another not always for the better yeah that is true well we're gonna find out how it ends sooner or later 
Even though it's a bit later. Yeah, uh, <laughs> later in our case. Because as mentioned before, this is our last stream for the next two weeks at least, since we'll be going on a vacation. That's true. I want root access to my mind sometimes. Wouldn't that, that be would nice? That would be kind of nice. <laughs> Give yourself admin privileges. Might want to get one of those chips of Musk. No. <laughs> Maybe then you'll get it. One of the last people I want anywhere near my body or inside my body is the piece of shit that is Elon Musk. No. no. I, I have to say though, I absolutely hated the writing in this episode. I, I mean that... Sorry, that, that sounds wrong. Um, I hated how it made me feel. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so in a good way. Sure, yeah. I, I say that as a compliment. Um, yeah. A lot of it? How do, how do I explain this? Uh, I, don't want, I don't want to be too much of a downer, but... When I still had... <laughs> you laughed to hate it, you mean? No, I... Jack is sensitive to horror. Not, not, no, no, I wouldn't call this, well, call it horror if you will, I, I don't know. Psychological thriller, I would say, but close enough. Um, My point still stands. No. But, uh, when I still had contact with my mother, in the time period leading up to this, when she had uh, left my dad and lived by herself and I was trying to rekindle uh, that situation. She was also already a raging alcoholic and I, I don't know better words, but the moment the seemingly momentarily switching between hot and cold like showering somebody with love and affection and in the next instance to be anger incarnate yeah. I've experienced this as a child. Yeah, I was like 15, 16. Love bombing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. First, like, e e my mother, I fully believe, did this as a purely manipulative thing to like try to like get me attached to her because she's a very fucked up person. That, but putting myself into Cage's shoes. The, this person is bad for me. This person is doing things that a friend wouldn't do, even a stranger shouldn't do, and I need to get away from them. Especially the moment where it gets physical, trying to enter your home after you've told them in no uncertain terms not to. Hey, heads off or how he's dealing with it. Yes, 100%. <laughs> but. I've lived some of those moments <laughs> and the way the writing is delivered it it brings back those memories and it makes me feel part of those things again and kudos to being able to make somebody feel things with your writing especially like something as complex and stuff as this but damn, does it not feel good, you know? <laughs> like, could do without uh, valid feelings. Thank you. Um, it's... Uh, I expected a lot of things from this game. I think especially like Eevee and then later Psycho and Dark Lord, all of you that have played through this game or these games already, uh, drumming up how well written it is and stuff. I expected a lot. I didn't expect that. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, you went in kind of blind, not knowing yeah. what it would be about anyway. Yeah, I saw the, the Steam banner art and I looked uh, cute uwu girls. I was like, <laughs> I guess there's going to be more than that, but yeah. What do you expect to happen next? Uh, I expect that the next 100 chapters are probably KG trying to come to terms with what's happening because that is a large ordeal, or can be at least. I don't uh, think he gets the chance so fast. 
or maybe doesn't even get the chance to process most of this or even any of it at all because he's trying to solve five murder cases at once at 15 while trying to save his life <laughs> That's right, and, not and be his the parents next one. <laughs> and not being the next victim and being basically alone because he can't rely on anybody's help in his mind. Yes, I think it's going to be a wild hodgepodge of situations happening to Keiichi. Yeah, I'm going to use that word again. Uh, he'll find himself in many a trilemma a quad lemma, so whatever the more version of that is. Uh, I, at this point, I could even foresee that the story just ends. I, I think it will have an actual ending, but... I think it will be more satisfying than some other endings, but I do expect more people to go... <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck <clears throat> you. Wished I didn't so I could speculate along. Mm. That is perfectly fine. I mean, we took forever to play on. So. If we had root access, we could have just gone, forget. Yeah, control, alt, shift, delete. Are you sure you want to delete? Yes. 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 Something like that. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen next, Tifa? Nah. Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't the remember that you watched the anime <laughs> years ago. I thought you were going in unspoiled. Uh, well, I don't know what happens next in this bit. Like I said, it's just like bits and pieces. Sometimes I think I remember something. I'm not sure if I do. Fair enough. It'd be <laughs> Such sadness. I aliens. Know. <laughs> aliens. <laughs> I'm not saying it's aliens, <laughs> but, but aliens. it's aliens. Yeah. Would be a perfectly fine explanation at this point because we did still have the whole weird there was a presence. It could just be his. It could just be his imagination. It could. Yeah. But it could also be aliens. aliens. Like who knows? A fourth dimensional being. <laughs> who was there all along? Uh -huh. I thought they went with a bad crowd, but it was worse when I thought aliens. I know it. I'm just waiting until we start time hopping. I feel like everything nah. we played at some while, point started involving time travel. Started evol evolving. Started involving different dimensions and yes. time traveling and hopping into other worlds. I mean, if you want to get metaphysical about it, if you um, believe that things like supernatural beings, demons, ghosts, whatever exist. It wouldn't be that much of a stretch to then go, okay, you can't usually see them because they exist in a plane of existence that you can't normally perceive. That is true. Which is why the Night of Awata Nagashi is so special. Because the barriers securing our dimensions off one from one day another a year. just overlap. Sometimes they cross over and in that gap in between exists Oh, yeah, she was someone. So, no. That's crazy talk. I know it. <laughs> you heard about Ice Nine. Yes, and I wish I would have left it at that. <laughs> but we're gonna get there. <sighs> Sorry, I lied to everybody. I thought we were gonna see episode 12 today, but episode 11 was long. Well, that means we now still have two chapters to go. Two episodes. Or two episodes, yeah, three. Yeah. Keep mixing up the chapters and episodes. How many does any of you do any of you know? How many chapters are there in total? Just trying to gauge how much Wasn't it eight? Seven? Eight sorry, episodes, not chapters. If I said chapters. Well that eight was chapters. Thirteen. Thirteen episodes in chapter one. Yeah. But I'm talking oh, about Oh you the mean total. in total or oh, that I don't know. Actually, forget that I asked. Um <clears throat> Because it doesn't matter because they are not all the same length or even similar. Like the, the first few were deceptive in the way that we went through them, like one per stream. But the deeper we get into it, the longer they seem to be sometimes. Yeah. Which makes sense. On average, I want to say they're roughly the same. Some are just slightly longer. Yeah. But yeah. And now we will leave you with uh, all of that for the time being. Sorry about that. Black Diva. 
No. There's eight chapters. I don't know offhand how many segments each chapter is. It's fine. It is fine. By the time we even something. reached out, <laughs> it's, it's uh. gonna be a while. <laughs> Chapter 4, the fourth part of the game, not the in-game episodes, is so short they charge less for it. Oh, that's very okay. fair. That is really big of them. Not a lot of developers or publishers would do that. That's... Yeah, that's kudos. fair. Yeah. yeah, damn. Absolutely. That's a good move. Yeah. Okay. We will find out at some point. Yeah. Tifa, do you have Any... anything to say to all of these wonderful people before we abandon them <laughs> <laughs> for two weeks we don't do this to hurt you but we need a vacation from like work and stuff and like we, we need to have our cake and eat it too sorry we'll be gone for two weeks that's true we'll still let you know when we'll be back you know discord we're not gone we're still there should be 7th of may but you'll need it Streaming is vacation! <laughs> yes. Kind we of, but actually, also not really. We have tried to stream during our vacation yeah, in work. the Netherlands. It didn't really work. Didn't work because, for one, I have to take all the equipment along, like the audio stuff, which is doable, but it takes up space. And I get really territorial about that part of the luggage. Because I don't want it to be shaken, I don't want it to be like disrupted in any shape or form because you know microphones and stuff are sensitive. Uh, plus it's not like I can take the whole computer and two screens and stuff along, so we tried it on the laptop. Let's not talk which, about the extra weight that has to be dragged along. Which I carried and made my back hurt because I'm weak. Uh, but no, it didn't. No. And then we couldn't play everything. Yeah. <laughs> the, the laptop struggled with OBS and uh, Super Mario World, uh, Super Mario Land 2, and DuckTales, I remember that. Yeah. So, great. no, you get to take a break, we get to take a break. And then we'll all be back refreshed, yay! You Woo. get to use that time to do things you normally don't while we're here, maybe, I don't know, clean your windows if you haven't in a while. Or sort out that one cupboard that you usually avoid. Do something. Read I a can. Book. I can recommend picking up beading. I like beads. Read a you book. You can do so many nice things with beads. Get some extra sleep. Ooh, on stream it actually looks even better. Yes. Yeah. I'm just saying it looks like better. I on tell stream. you, they're looking good. But it's still I can't, right. Yeah, because Back you're too close up to it, you see all the flaws because you made it. But yeah, uh, get some extra sleep, play some games you didn't get the chance to yet, or just uh, work on that backlog every day at or not seven or whatever the equivalent of your time is. Go to YouTube and watch the video we uploaded. There'll be one every day starting tomorrow. There you go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, that's it. Need to finish Omineko's manga before starting another project. What? Now you got two weeks? Wow, leaving me hanging. Love! Love! I'm sorry! <laughs> too, wow. too much stuff on my plate, but alas! Well, now you got two weeks. You can catch up. Thank you very much. It's gonna be good, I hope. Have <laughs> fun, you monster! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tifa, press the button. We'll it's, be it's back. It's just getting harder to say goodbye. Press Before the button. You know. Thank you, everybody. I miss you. We'll see you again in two weeks. Thank you, everybody, for being with us. Uh, we'll let you know. You'll see the schedule. We'll be on this call. Thank you, thank you.